And what a game we have in store for you tonight as we looked at the schedule this week. This matchup between the single-A number one ranked Kentwood Kangaroos and the triple-A number two ranked Independence Tigers is one of the best around. And when you talk about Independence, the first name that comes to your mind is LeBrandon, the real deal Tofield, folks. He is the real deal. He's leading the AAA in scoring with 13 touchdowns in three games. But what stands out about that, Marty, is he's only played approximately six quarters in those games. Tonight he'll get his first test against a tough Kentwood Kangaroos team. And that Kentwood team is very tough. A veteran team, a team that went to the Superdome last year only to lose a heartbreaker in double overtime. Now, on Kentwood, they have some weapons of their own, and that's going to be Demetrius Hookfin, a defensive back and a wide receiver. Also, Eugene Thompson, the best linebacker in Tanchebo Parish. That's right, he is the best in my opinion, and he will flat out hit you. Kentwood comes in a little banged up tonight without two starters, but on the flip side, they have depth for a single-A school. So tonight is going to be a great matchup of two powerhouses. They've had three early tests. This will be the exam. And we'll be right back with this big battle here in Tigertown as we're in Independence to see Entwood, Independence Tigers versus the Kentwood Kangaroos. That's division game of the week. And tonight, Marty, we have Independence and Kentwood in a major war here in Tanchpaho Parish. And we're proud to be here to bring it to you. And right now, we'd like to let you know about our sponsors. First of all is Ragusa Building Supply here in Independence. Go there for all your plumbing, electrical, whatever you need done to your house, whatever you need done to re renovate your house, they've got it there to do for you. So go by seeing Charles Ragusa there in Independence. Also the caboose in Independence. A lot of fine dining, best steaks around. Go by and see Wayne over there before the game. Any night of the week, they have great food at the caboose in Independence. That's Lloyd Kenshin. Also... Kentwood Ford Mercury. That's your truck headquarters in Kentwood for Ford. They have some of the new 98s coming out. Right now having a big 97 clearance sale. And also People's Bank in Kentwood. The fastest growing bank in the parish. Stop by to see Charlotte Rodas for a home loan or any other loan. Member of the FDIC. And also Gill Motor Company. Gill Motor Company, Highway 38 in Kentwood, Louisiana, would like to salute the fine players and coaches of Kentwood and Independence High School. Come in today and see our huge selection of Chevy vehicles, Chrysler, Dodge, plus many program cars and trucks to choose from. As we prepare for the kickoff, Kentwood will line up to kick off. Deep to receive in the middle is number two, LeBrandon Tofield, but it will be fielded by number six, that's the various best comes to the outside and he will be stopped and knocked down at the 24 yard line so the first test for the Kentwood defense you know you cannot stop LeBrandon Tofield you can only hope to contain him what do they have to do tonight to do that Marty well like you said I think they have to contain Tofield but they also have to be aware that Independence will set up the pass with the run they're gonna run Tofield run Tofield and then with the uh, strong arm ability of the, and the passing ability of Sieber, they're going to throw off of it. So it's going to be a tough task defensively for Kentwood. And Kentwood has a fine defense. It'll be a test for this big offensive line for Independence, led by number 54, Kerry Watkins. Antron Sieber will pitch to Tofield. He'll break to the outside, cut back up. He's going to be hit and down at about the 27-yard line. He'll pick up about three there as they just ran the toss sweep off tackle. And uh, one thing about Kentwood, I want to let the people know they're very fast one of the fastest teams you'll see all 11 men can run so Kentwood is a, is a very tough team to run against that will bring up a second and a long six for Independence at their own 27 yard line they come out in the I formation one receiver Rod Williams to the bottom of the screen as we have a whistle from the officials Independence is going to try to run the ball often tonight, establish that running game, and then let Antron Sieber throw the ball down the field. And this is something odd that we see. Number 90, Antoine Courtney in on offense. We hadn't seen that in a couple of weeks. So they're going to line him out on the end, put another big body in there to try to get Tofield out in the open field as we're having a little trouble with the clock. So the officials come to the sideline now. And at this time, we'd like to... Thank one of our sponsors, Gill Motor Company, Highway 38 in Kentwood, Louisiana, is proud to support the fine players and coaches of Kentwood and Independence High School. You know that Kentwood and Independence High School fans are always greeted with a smile and a handshake at Gill Motor Company. Gill Motor Company, Highway 38 in Kentwood, and remember, you'll always get a great deal from Gill. 
as we have a slight delay here with the clock as they will wave it off and we were here last week and they had problems with the clock and had to keep the time on the field so now with 11.49 left to go in the first quarter we've only had one offensive play from Independence they will bring up second down and six come out in the I formation and there the clock rolls as the referees wave it on and Antron Sieber will line up at quarterback Tofield is the deep back. Number 24, Brandon Dawson at fullback. Williams to the bottom half. And Tofield is hit at the line, and a gain's only about a yard. It'll bring up a third and five. So a little hole opened up there, but Kentwood is quick to close in on those tackles. And they, and they are, Darrell. And what Independence is doing is they land Antoine Courtney, either tie it in and split him back at the wing back, getting a big body man, 260, hoping to get some more blocking. But right there, Kentwood's defense, Close the gap early, and Tofield only picked up a yard, so it's going to bring up third down and five, a passing situation for the Tigers. And number eight, Kenny Albritton, will come in at one wide receiver to the bottom of the screen, double wides to the top with Tofield alone set back. Sieber takes a snap, pitches to Tofield. He'll cut it upfield, and he's going to be stopped short, about a yard short of the first down as Independence keeps the ball on the ground. And it's going to bring up about a... Fourth and one for Independence, so big decision here early. As the quarterback, Antron Sieber, discusses on the sideline, it looks like they are going to go for it here early. So with the ball at their own 33-yard line, you're going to see a power set here and a, a big call for Coach Baggs early in this ball game. And Darrell, look for him to probably try to pull him off sides, but we will see. And once again, three wide receivers, two to the bottom half of your screen, one to the top, toe field alone setback. Sieber barks out, calls timeout. I think they just thought maybe they might get them off sides. I think they'll go in with the punting unit now as we see them trot out on the field. So just trying to psych out the Kentwood Kangaroos here early in this ball game. And early on, Darrell, that sets the tempo in Kentwood's favor because it gives them confidence showing that they can stop this high-powered offensive independence, showing that, you know, hey, you're not just going to drive it down our throats and score a will. So early on, the advantage goes to Kentwood. And this will probably be a game decided by field position and turnovers as number 80, Quentin Weatherford, will prepare to punt for the first time for Independence. He sets up at his own 20-yard line. Back deep to receive. I can't see the number. He's lined up at number at his own 32-yard line. That's number two, Demetrius Hookfin, and he's quite an athlete himself. Will take the line drive punt. Gets by the first tackler, and oh, gang tackled at the 38-yard line. Fine job by Charles Tofield to hold him up till the cavalry could arrive. And that was big Antoine Smith. He came in there and just lowered the boom on hook fin, and we could hear it all the way up from here, Darrell. That was an awfully hard hit. So Kentwood will come out on offense for the first time. They will be led by number 10 quarterback Ernest Carter. Hookfield will wind up at one wide out. The other wide out is Joe Hill. And the running back is number 20, Alonzo Art, as they line up in the wing tee. Quarterback keeper, Carter cuts back against the grain. If he can get the corner, he's got one man to beat. And he is gone. And no, he's tackled at the 28 and looked like he had a step and could have broke it all the way. So a huge play on offense for Kentwood to start off this ball game. And, Darrell, that was just a broken play. It looked like it was going to be a quarterback keeper around the left side, but Carter could not find something, and he turned it back to the right, and he picked up about 42 yards down to the Independence 28-yard line. As Carter came to the left side, nothing there, used his athletic ability to reverse his field and made a big play. Kentwood will have the ball first down at the Independence 28-yard line, first and 10. Carter under center in the tee offense. Will come on the reverse, and big Antoine Courtney says, no, sir, huge play in the backfield. And we talked about big Antoine. He just manhandled a, a defensive tackle up front, and he threw hard for about a four-yard loss. So big play by the Independence defense, bringing up second down and 15. And that was number 12, Noah Cooper, who came around the side. And he had no chance, folks, as big Antoine Courtney had set up shop in the backfield. So it'll bring up a second and 13. Carter looks over to the defense, takes a snap, drops back to pass, stumbles slightly. He's going deep. Number one's open. 
He will catch it as for a touchdown. Kenwood has jumped out on top here as number seven, Charles Tofield, was in position but mistimed his jump. So a big play. Kentwood has busted out to a six-point lead here early. And what kind of confidence does that give Kentwood early on at Independence's home stadium as they lead six to nothing on a 42 yards, I'm sorry, 32 yard strike from quarterback Ernest Carter to number one Joe Hill into attempt. The PAT will be number 53. That is Mac Garrett. And number 53 having a little trouble getting his shoe on. The snap is made, it's down, the kick is up, and it is, it's good. So Kentwood jumps out to a seven to nothing lead. This time we'd like to thank one of our sponsors. That would be Kentwood Ford Mercury. Come on by and see them down at Kentwood Ford Mercury as they are their truck headquarters in Kentwood. Right now they're having their big 97 clearance sale. They also have a lot of driver's education cars down there at some great prices. Take a nice country ride and get a great deal down home counting deal at Kentwood Ford Mercury. Go by and see Sherry Laborde or Danny Sibley at Kentwood Ford Mercury. Also, Ragusa Building Supply and Independence for all your hardware needs. Go on down there and check them out, and, and they'll fix up anything you need for electrical, plumbing, building supplies. They have it all down there on the main highway there in Independence as they will prepare to kick off. The kick goes deep. It will be taken by Tofield at the two. LeBrandon comes up to the middle, gets by one man. He's got a seam. He's hit. He's on the outside. He's going to be hit hard and that's number 12 Noah Cooper put the boom on Tofield but a big return out to the 48 yard line so great field position for the Tigers for their second possession and folks we couldn't ask much more for the fourth week in the season there is just some strapping and hitting going on out there Daryl as we have seen two big hits hardest hits you'll see anywhere early on in the first quarter as Kentwood leads with 8.45 to go in the first quarter, seven to nothing. And they come out in a three wide receiver set, two to the top, one to the bottom, and Tofield the lone setback. Antron Sieber under center, will take the snap, hand to Tofield, he'll break a tackle at the line, he gets a seam, runs over a man down to the 40 yard line, and he'll pick up a first down as he's tackled there by number eight, Travis Wesby. And Tofield lowered his shoulder and just ran over one man. As we see, not only does he have speed and moves, he's got the power. Well, just a, a little lead draw off to the right side, and the big guy burst through the hole, and he just ran over a defender and picked up the first down. And, you know, you're not going to stop Independence. You might slow them down, but they're going to get their points. We look for a high-scoring game here, and so far it's been all of Brandon Tofield for the Independence offense. Sooner or later, you're going to see Antron Sieber go to the air as he has got a rifle arm. He takes a snap, hands it to Tofield once again up the middle. He'll be stopped for about a two-yard game, and he is gang-tackled there by Eugene Thompson, and number 33 is, that was 33, Eugene Thompson, and 49. Robert Carter, so nice game tackling by Kentwood. He'll bring up a second and eight for Independence. So Independence has gone strictly on the ground to LeBrandon Tofield, as we'll see if they can get somebody else involved in the offense here as Sieber drops back into the huddle and will call the play. Very important for Independence to come down here with this great field position and try to get some points on the board as they've given up a big play and are down seven to nothing with 7.32 left to go in the first quarter. Three receivers set, two to the short side at the bottom. He'll turn, fake the handoff to Tofield. Williams is open. He throws the ball. It one hops him for an incompletion. The man had a had a step on the defender. Had opened up, but it was a short pass by Sieber. And right there, you saw something very unusual, Daryl. As Independence went in a certain set, it almost seems as if Kentwood knew they were going to pass because a down lineman had moved out to cover in the flat. So, right there, uh, Kentwood expecting the pass and getting the pass and they they were right in the right areas and had pressure on Seaburn and he just underthrew it. So third down and eight for the Independence Tigers and I venture to say they will have some receivers open tonight. We have to see if Antron Sieber can put the ball on the money as Kenny Albrecht lines up to the low side. Two receivers to the high. Tofield alone back. Drops back. He's being pressured. Gets to the outside and he's going to be sacked for a loss by Paul Bates and dropped for about a six yard loss at the 44-yard line of Independence, which will force them into a punting situation. So thus far on Independence's first two opportunities, they have 
not been able to get anything going. They picked up two first downs, but Kentwood has not broken. They've been a little bit, but they just have not broken. And uh, Quentin Weatherford comes in to punt, back deep to receive, will be number two, Demetrius Hookfin. And for Kentwood, you like to see the ball in Hook Finn's hand as he's one of your best athletes, a lot of speed over there. As he is set to receive at about his own 10-yard line, the punt is up and away, and it's high, angling toward the sideline, and it will go out of bounds at, as we await the call by the official, looks to be about the 20, he's still walking, the 20, Four-yard line, folks. At this time, we'd like to remind you about one of our sponsors, People's Bank in Kentwood, the fastest-growing bank in the parish. Stop by to see Charlotte Rodas for a home loan or any other loan, member of the FDIC and equal housing lender. All your banking needs can be taken care of right there at People's Bank in downtown Kentwood. And for the second time tonight, Kentwood will come out on offense. Leading this ball game 7 to nothing with 6.27 to go in the first quarter. Carter under center in the wing tee. 20 yard goes in motion as they hand up to the fullback and he'll be stopped for about a one yard gain. And to run that play, you're going to have to get Independence off that line and they have a big defensive line led by Antoine Courtney. They do. They, and also big Don Drake up there, Stephen Mulkey, uh, number 59. That's, I'm sorry, number 57, Antoine Smith. Kentwood comes out once again. They have a double wing offense with a single back. Two wide receivers. Carter will drop back to pass. And it is completed at the 29-yard line. Tackled there by number five, Otto Bonds. Number 34, Chadrick Brown on the reception. And a nice pass there as it looked like Independence was in position. But he just put it on the line and completed the pass. And early on, Ernest Carter's hitting his receivers. He's poised back there. And, Darrell, one thing that's surprising is he's getting a little time. But Otto Bonds... Made a great play. right on the spot. You can't ask a defensive back to do any better. And it will bring up a third and a long four for the Kentwood Kangaroos. Carter once again in the double wing set. The one back is Ard. Carter drops back to throw once again. He's got hook fin open deep. And he overthrows him a little bit. And it's number six, Otto Bonds from his safety position, closes in. And that will bring up a punting situation for Kentwood. So Kentwood has gone to the air a little more than maybe we expected here early on, but they lead this ball game 7-0 on a big pass play by Ernest Carter. He's been on the money so far. Deep to receive will be number 8, Kenny Albright, and we saw him make some great runs last week on the punt return, so let's see if he can give Independence good field position as they try to get back in this ball game. Deep to punt is number 2, Mr. Everything, Demetrius Hookfin for Kentwood. He will punt the ball from his 20-yard line. Almost blocked as it angles out of bounds. As Independence will have the ball at their own 40-yard line. And they will open up their third series. And so far, they've yet to strike. And in this young season, Independence has scored often, and it will. And so far tonight, they can't seem to get in the end zone. But what they did, Darrell, they did something early. That they, they pounded toe field, pounded toe field. So they're just kind of setting Kentwood up, knowing that it's a long game. Because if you just think Independence is totally toe field, you're wrong. Because they're very diversified. They can also pass. But this is one fine kangaroo defense here tonight, and they are big and fast. And so far, they're playing Independence right to the top. Sieber will turn and hand up the middle to Tofield. He will be hit hard by number 33, Eugene Thompson. And, you know, a few weeks ago, we saw Mr. Parsons down at Springfield and talk about what a wonderful linebacker he is. This kid, Eugene Thompson, is a fine linebacker in his own right, probably the best two in the state. Oh, they definitely are in that classification, no doubt about it. And uh, Eugene Thompson, he's, he's only a junior, so next year will be a lot of scouts looking at this young man. So second and nine for the Independence Tigers at their own 41-yard line. Sieber under center. High backfield, one receiver to the high side. He will turn, fake to Tofield. It's going to be a keeper, and it's going nowhere. And that's once again number 89, Paul Bates. And Paul Bates is just coming off the corner, going upfield. He's not being fooled by that, that fake handoff to Tofield. No, he's not. And uh, Kentwood early on has kind of taken over this game in the first quarter. And... Independence just having trouble getting anything going, Darrell. 
So with a third and 12, as they lose three yards on the play, Independence will go into their bag of tricks and see if they can complete a pass and pick up this first down as they've had adequate field position early here. They will come out in the three receiver set with two to the short side at the bottom and Rod Williams to the top. Now they send one receiver to the top side, so it will be double top. LeBrandon Tofield, the lone setback. Antron Sieber fakes to Tofield. He beats a man to the outside. He's got a lane. He's going to keep it, pick up about six or seven, and go out of bounds about three yards short of the first down. The young man got the corner but quit, got, couldn't quite get the first down as Independence will bring up a fourth and three at their own 47-yard line. And once again, I think they will punt the football as we have mass substitutions trot onto the field. So Kentwood once again has stopped this Independence offense, this juggernaut of an offense. And right now, Kentwood on defense seems to have the game plan that, that, that they need to stop this offense as, as they have held them to no first down so far. Dropping back to punt is number 80, Quentin Weatherford. Deep to receive, number two, Demetrius Hookfin. High snap, good catch by Weatherford. Gets off a nice punt, angled out of bounds once again, and will go out at about the 22-yard line. So Kentwood will set up shop at their own 25. The Kangaroos lead this ball game 7 to nothing with 3.14 left to go in the first quarter. And Darrell, very good coaching by Independence. Instructing Quentin Weatherford to kick the ball out of bounds is what they're doing. You don't want a guy like Hook Finn touching the ball too many times because he is so dangerous when he has the ball. So Kentwood will come back on offense. And this has been a nice ball game so far tonight as we expected a close ball game. And each team playing it a little bit close to the vest early on. Carter will come out once again under center. He'll take the snap. Keep it to the right, and he's going to be wrapped up and stuffed by number 57, Antoine Smith, as he read that play right from the get-go. And nice play. Uh, once again, Kentwood trying to get the quarterback, Ernest Carter, outside, but Antoine Smith doing a nice job from his defensive end position. So that'll bring up second down and 13 to go with 2.52 to go in the first quarter, and Kentwood leading independence 7 to nothing. And Coach Baggs has been around long enough to know you don't panic. You get down seven points, especially at home. So they're still playing a little field position right now. So the defense needs to step up and stop them here. Kentwood on offense needs to complete a couple more of those passes that they did early on as Carter turns and hands to Ard. But number 90, Antron Cartney in the backfield once again. And if he's going to live in the backfield like that tonight, it's going to be hard for Kentwood to run the football. It definitely is. As Antron Cartney has been on two big plays causing losses for the Kangaroos, so he has stepped it up tonight. We'll bring up a third and 15 for the Kangaroos, as they will probably go to the air here with number one lining up to the low side of the field. That's Joe Hill. One receiver to the top, number 34, is Chadrick Brown. Double wing set with a single back. Carter will drop back to pass. He's looking for the slant. He's going to roll. He's going to keep it and hit hard at the 26-yard line by number four. That's Keith McClain in on the tackle, and it will stop him short of the first down and force Kentwood into a punting situation. So a fourth and nine will force Kentwood to punt the ball. Once again, number eight, Kenny Albritton, will be back to receive, it, setting up at about his own 41-yard line. And so far in the first quarter, Independence has had excellent field position, but has yet to capitalize on it as Kentwood has stifled this offense of Independence. Hook Finn will take the snap. The punt is away, a low line drive kick, but deep and over the head of Albritton as he fumbles it, picks it up off one hop, and is covered, but he gets to the outside and picks up a nice little return out to the 42-yard line as we see a flag come in late, and it looks like it's going to be a late hit against Kentwood. Oh, I think that's what it's going to be, or possibly a clip against Independence, but I don't think it was a clip. It looked like a pretty good block from here, but we'll, we'll see what the, end of, what the referees decide to call. As we wait for the call from the referees, the flag flew out of bounds, so I've got to believe, no, it is a clip against Independence, so that will push them back to about the 25-yard line. At this time, we'd like to thank one of our sponsors, the Caboose in Independence. I've been there three or four times, and you go in, and it's always crowded, but if, if you have a few minutes to wait, they have a beautiful piano bar upstairs that is, that is gorgeous for you. Spend a little time. 
up there and then you come down and they have the best steaks around. I know you've been there, Marty, and, and they are fabulous. They melt in your mouth. So hopefully after this game, we can slide by the caboose and get us a steak, maybe put it on Butch Lee's tab, our cameraman, because we know his, his credit's good all over the country. So Independence will start out first and 10 at their own 24-yard line, so a costly penalty for Independence on the clip on the return. High backfield, Sieber hands to Tofield. He's got a hole, dragging one man, and he's out to the 31-yard line. Will pick up six yards and tackled by number 49, Robert Carter. So Tofield, they're going back to him, and he's going to have to carry the load tonight. He most certainly is. Kentwood defensively has done a good job thus far, but one thing you might want to add is that Independence plays a lot of guys one way. They, they platoon. They have more depth. So we'll see what that depth factor does as we get later into the ball game. And any time Tofield touches the ball, you have the chance of him going the distance as he is one of the best around. Once again, the handoff goes to Tofield, but he's stacked up at the line. And this Kentwood defense has come out to play, and they've heard all the accolades that Mr. Tofield has, and they want to let him know they can play too. They certainly do, and right now, Independence just not having much success up the middle. With, like we said, Eugene Thompson, you're not going to find a better middle linebacker than him in high school, and he has done a whale of a job. And, Daryl, the people here is just amazing for a game. It's, it's like a big playoff atmosphere. There's three, 4,000 people here. There's not an empty seat to be found. It is standing room only in the end zones, as the people have come from all over, not just Kentwood and Independence, but... A. Mead and Hammond and Ponchatoula, they're all here to see this game as the end of the first quarter as Kentwood leads this ball game 7 to nothing. Okay, as we open the second quarter here, Independence has a third and one. They will come out with Antron Courtney lined up in one running back position, so look for Tofield to follow the big man into the hole. And they will run right behind him. He's got a hole hit at the line, and he will burst forward to the 37-yard line and pick up the first down, so... We saw Hammond do this last year with Tyrone Smith as they put the big man up there to lead the running back through the hole. And right now, Courtney did the job to pick up Independence to pick up the first down and keep this drive alive as they trail 7 to nothing with 11.50 to go in the second quarter. Independence desperately needs to complete a pass or to get somebody else involved to try to get their offense going as it has been all Tofield early on. Kent Wood seems to be keying on him and doing the job so far as they've held him pretty much in check in this first half. Sieber with an eye backfield, two receivers to the bottom half. He will turn, once again it's Tofield, cuts back up inside, picks up about four or five yards on first down. So Independence right now is content just to, to bang it at them and hopefully they think maybe they can wear them down in the second half. And Independence using all of their resources. You see Antoine Courtney coming in on offense. Last possession you saw Seaburn and Tofield playing some defense. So using everything they got this is a big game you know it's a big confidence builder down the line for both teams and second and a sh short five as two receivers go to the top kenny albrenton to the high side williams in the slot in an eye backfield once again it's tofield off tackle and he's hit by paul base from behind but he carries him for about a seven yard gain as they break into kangaroo territory and get another first down as Independence starting to open a few holes, they're not getting the big plays, but they're getting four and five yards a shot on offense every time Tofield carries the ball now. That's right. They're wearing them down, and you're going to be happy if you coach Charles Baglio with letting your big tailback get five yards a carry. So there's a timeout on the field. Listen, we'll take time to hear from some of our sponsors. This game being sponsored by Kentwood Ford in Kentwood, Louisiana. Come see the 1997 clearance sale, the 1997 Mercury Tracer for only $9,999. Also, the 97 Ford Aspire, only $9,888. Kentwood Ford Lincoln Mercury, one block off I-55 in Kentwood, Louisiana. Go see Sherry Laborde or, or Danny Sibley for a great deal on a used Ford or Mercury. That's Kentwood Ford Mercury. As Independence has moved into Kangaroo territory at the 49-yard line, they have a first down and 10 yards to go as they trail this ball game, seven to nothing. And you know we haven't seen every Independence game, but this might be the first time all year that they've trailed in a ball game. And so far, they they've kept their emotions in check, and it's been a pretty well played ball game so far. Independence starting to move Kentwood off the line just a little as they rack up two first downs and 
have moved into Kentwood territory as they try to drive down and even up this ball game. Sieber will be under center of the eye backfield. Two receivers to the lower half of your screen. Antron Sieber takes a snap, turns, hands the toe fields. He cuts back inside and nowhere to be found as Eugene Thompson and also big number 60, that's Nicky Batiste, make the hit on him at the line of scrimmage and keep him to no gain. And right there, they just test in that middle, Daryl. They keep testing that middle. One of these times, they're going to start going outside. And just as we talk about Kentwood getting blown off the ball a little bit here early in the second quarter, they come up and make a big stop to put Independence in a second and ten. The Tigers yet to, to make the big play, which they've become so famous for early in this season. So three receivers set with Tofield alone set back. Williams to the bottom half. All Britain to the top half with... Man in the slot, Tofield fake to him. Sieber will get to the outside, throws the pass, and it is caught there for about an eight-yard gain. And that's number eight, Kenny Albright, as he made a sliding nice catch and a good throw by Sieber. And that was a beautiful play by Sieber, eluding Bates and rolling to his right. And Kenny Albright made a nice job to come back, picking up seven yards to bring it to third down and two. And once again, we see the big lineup coming in with Antoine Courtney coming in the backfield to lead Tofield as they have a third and short two here. And they're in Kentwood territory at the 41-yard line. Their trail seven to nothing with nine and a half minutes left to go in the second quarter. So they look to maybe run, if they have to, two plays to pick the first down, keep the clock moving, and get, try to get this game even in the second quarter. Power backfield. Tofield, the backs. He'll get the ball. He'll drag. He busts up the middle. Gains down to about the 23-yard line as he drags three players from Kentwood. Once he got the little hole, he was able to bust through and break a tackle and made a big gain there. And once again, I hate to keep pointing this, but Independence is starting to pound these guys with the bigger players. And with Kentwood going a lot, players going both ways is going to wear them down a little bit. But so far, they've been in control of this ball game as Independence has shown a little bit of life here in the second quarter. They certainly have, Daryl. They've picked up something, and I think they're going to stick what works, and that's uh, putting that big package in there and pounding Tofield. And we've seen it on short yardage situations, but first and ten, and they have Courtney in the backfield once again. As he will run left, hit at the line of scrimmage, but forces his way forward for out of pickup of three, and not only do they have Courtney in the backfield, they're lining up another offensive lineman, Steve Mulkey, in the backfield. So... A little different offensive set for the Tigers as they are going to power football. 8.24 left to go in the first quarter. They trail 7 to nothing, but they will have a second and 8 at the Kentwood 21-yard line as Kentwood tries to stall this offense here and keep Independence off the board as they have made one big play on offense to get the score and really haven't moved the ball. And This is the first time we've seen Independence put any yardage under their belt and pick it up three or four first downs. Sieber with the eye backfield. Two receivers to the top half of the screen. He takes a snap. Will hand to Tofield. Off tackle. Hit at the line, but forces forward for about a pickup of three yards. And so far, a nice played ball game. Very few penalties so far. So both teams look like they came prepared and well coached and ready to play tonight. They sure have. And uh, Independence, you know, they started off in their regular offense the I formation, but they saw they couldn't get nothing going, so they go to something different, and it shows you the diversification of this team, what they can do. So, Independence throwing everything they got at this Kentwood team, and what a tough Kentwood team this is. So, third and five from the 19-yard line, as Kentwood will come out with a four-man front. They're playing a 4-3 here. Independence, Sieber, as the whistle blows, they were going to run the toss sweep to Tofield. Try to get him to the outside, but the whistle blew, and there's a flag down. As we await the call, I think it will go against Independence. No, the Independence called a timeout before the play. So at this time, we'd like to thank one of our sponsors, Ragusa Building Supply in Independence. I went in there the other day, and they have just about anything that you can name. They have very helpful and friendly personnel. They were answering questions that I didn't even know, not that I'm the smartest guy in the world, but Marty, you being the tool man, you had to notice the same thing. Oh, I did. I needed to do a little uh, fixing up on my sink at the house, and I got me some PVC pipe, and I went there, and I got some glue, and I fixed my sink. They've got it all at Ragusa Brothers. You don't want to put up with some of the large 
crowds at other places where Goose together, Brothers conveniently located, located in downtown Independence and friendly folks up there and they love their Tiger football. And we want to remind everybody, if you go to any of these places, say hello to all these sponsors out there and thank them for putting high school football on the air. Also, Gill Motor Company, Highway 38 in Kentwood, would like to salute the fine players and coaches of Kentwood and Independence. Come in today and see our huge selection of Chevy vehicles, Chrysler Dodge vehicles, plus many program cars and trucks to choose from. At the end of the game, when the coaches cross the field, they will salute each other with a smile and a handshake, just like you will be greeted at Gill Motor Company. Independence once again in the power backfield on third and five from the 19. They will turn and fake the hand off the toe field. And Sieber is sacked in the backfield. That's number eight. Travis Wesby drops him for about an eight-yard loss. And it will bring up a fourth and about 12. And that was just a great play by Wesby coming on a linebacker blitz. And, you know, if you play independence, I think you got to try to blitz them a lot, Darrell. You got to make things happen. You can't just sit there and let Tofield come to you. You got to mix it up and go after it. And that's what Kent Wood's doing. And they're coming on a lot of run blitzes here as we've only seen independence complete one pass, a little out pattern. But independence with a fourth and 12 will go for it from their own 26 yard line. The lone setback is Tofield. Sieber under center with two receivers to the top. Fakes the handoff. Bates is coming again as he throws it toward the end zone. And high to the outside. And it is incomplete as great coverage there by the quarterback. Number 10, Ernest Carter, was all over all Britain as a pass sailed high and to the right. And you got you to gotta give applause to Kentwood for sticking in there. They're bending Darrell a little bit, but they're just not breaking. They're hanging and hanging in there. And they, thus far, with 6.09 to go in the halftime, they're, they're holding their own as they lead Independence seven to nothing. And we heard about this Kentwood team. A lot of people have said that they are better than the team that lost in the state finals in overtime last year to Southern Lab. So right now they're proving it to the Independence Tigers as they lead this ball game seven to nothing with 6:09 left to go as they take over at their own 26-yard line. First down and ten. They turn and hand the ball to Ard, but once again. Antoine Courtney stuffing behind the line for a one-yard loss, and Mr. Courtney's come to play tonight. He sure has, Darrell, as he has been on about 70% of the plays for Independence. He is doing a great job. And he is one big man to try to handle on that defensive line. Courtney stands at 6'3 and 270 pounds. You got Drake in the middle at 315 pounds, so a lot of beef up front for the Tigers. Courtney jumps, but no flag as Carter's rolling right. Got a man open, and it is dropped. And that was number 12, Noah Cooper, as Carter rolled to the outside and hit him right in the hands as he just dropped it. So it will bring up a third and about 11 for the Kangaroos. And uh, Noah Carter... Doing a great job, Darrell. Ernest Carter, I should just add, is doing a great job thus far, rolling out, eluding the rush, and he's he's been on target all night long. But that one not completed as they didn't quite get the execution. And once again, we see Tofield and Sieber come in on defense with Albretton in the backfield. So they're bringing a lot of their athletes in to try to stop this Kent Wood attack that leads them seven to nothing right now. Third down and 11 from the 25-yard line. Carter drops back to pass once again. He's pressured. He'll cut up the middle on a keeper and will be tackled there. And that was number five, Otto Bonds, in a textbook tackle. He just put his helmet right in the middle of his chest and drove him to the ground. And that's a much-needed defensive stand for Independence as they, they have stiffened after the first series. And uh, Kentwood has not gotten a first down. So that's going to bring up fourth down and eight. And Kentwood will be forced to punt for the ever-so-dangerous Kenny Albritton. And Independence has had great field position in his first half, but yet to drive one in for a score as Kentwood leads this ball game 7 to nothing and doing a fine job on defense. Offensively, they had the one series where they got the big pass play as Kentwood will take a timeout here. And at this time, we'd like to hear from one of our sponsors. That would be People's Bank in Kentwood, the fastest growing bank in the parish. We stopped by to see Charlotte Rodas the other day, and they have a nice bank there. And you can go in there and get your checking account, your saving account, any kind of home loan or any other loan you might need. They're a member of the FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. That is People's Bank in Kentwood. We'd like to thank them for sponsoring the ball game tonight. So, in 
Independence right now desperately needs a big run back of a punt here as they will send all Britain back deep to receive as they have yet to make a big play on offense. And we saw them put up 60-something points last week against Booker T. Washington. So far tonight, Kentwood has their number and has kept them scoreless in the first half. And they have. Kentwood's done a great job defensively as uh, their linebackers have been all over this field tonight. And their defensive backfield has done a nice job covering. So Kentwood, it's been a well-played game. I tell you what, if you're out there watching it, do not leave your TV set because it's only going to get better. Tangy TV, game of the week. I'm Daryl Smith along with my cameraman, Butch Lee, and also my tag team partner in crime, Merely Marty Morgan, as we see the Tigers jump off sides. I'm not sure if they're drawn or not. Even if they are off sides, it will not give Kentwood a first down as Albritton looked to set up the return at about his own 40-yard line. So Independence desperately, as they jump off side, needs a big return from Albritton. They've got to get something to go on as there's only 4.47 left to go in this first half, and they trail 7 to nothing. As the referees mark off the five yards, Kentwood will still be in punting position. And, folks, if you hear us waving our hands or clapping a little bit, we're up here on top of the press box, and there are bugs everywhere as we're close to the lights. So we're, we're fighting our own battles up here. Hook Finn will he, once again line drive the punt. All Britain takes it. Tries to cut up the middle. He's got a little bit of a seam. Hit and broke one tackle, and that was Eugene Thompson on special teams. But he gets the ball out to the 47-yard line. So once again, Independence with great field position. And let's see if they go back to the power set or they try to open it up here and see if Antron Sieber can complete a couple of passes and get them down the field here as there's only four and a half minutes left to go in the second quarter. And they are down seven to nothing. As we see Mr. Tofield walk out to the huddle, he's been the man so far tonight. If they've, he's carried it quite often tonight. Yet to be able to break one, but he's gained some nice yardage on a lot of plays, but Kenwood has also stuffed him a few times. So, so far, a pretty even battle against this offense versus the Kentwood defense. The fake goes to Tofield as the flag is down. He throws. Weatherford complete over the middle. And he is hit hard by Demetrius Hookfin. The gain is out for first down to the 40-yard line, but we will have to wait for the flag. We await the official's call. It looked like the wide receiver at the top half of the screen might have moved. And that is the call as we get illegal motion on Independence. So it negates a big completion there and right now they really need to make a couple of completions to spread out this offense and try to and that will help Tofield get his running game going and I think that's what they tried to do early you know they tried to run the ball run the ball and set up the pass and now they're going back to the passing game because independence they can throw as well as run but thus far they're having a little trouble against this stingy Kentwood defense so it will be first and 15 at the 43 yard line for the Tigers Three wide receivers, two to the top half and one to the bottom as Tofield is a lone setback. They will hand it to Tofield as he cuts up the middle, picks up about five yards and hit hard there by number eight, Travis Wesby. But he will pick up five and they will be back to the original line of scrimmage, bringing up a second and ten. And, Darrell, one thing you're going to notice about Kentwood is they, they do a great job of tackling. They wrap up very nicely and... And it, it, it's hard enough trying to bring Tofield down with his speed and power, but when they get a hold of you, they don't usually let go. Fine coaching job by the coaches of Kentwood as they have been textbook tackles against Tofield tonight, have not allowed him to break the big play. This defense ranked very highly in the state coming into the night game, and Sieber will drop back to pass. He's being pressured by three men and dragged down by number 82, Tim Cooper. And every time... Sieber drops back to pass. He is being blitzed and blitzed hard by the kangaroo defense. And like we said, you know, you just can't sit back in your base defense if you're going to play independence. You have to throw some blitzes in there and uh, some zone blitzes. And thus far, Kentwood doing a great job. So Sieber will be dragged down and bringing up a, I think it's a third down and 16 to go. As the clock ticks down, two minutes, 45 seconds left to go in the first half. Independence trails seven to nothing. Kitwin has played one fine ball game as we see. Once again, Independence take a timeout, and we'll be back right after this timeout. 16 to go as the 
unstoppable force has met the unmovable object in the kangaroo defense and they have stopped independence tonight he will throw the ball to 32 rod williams and he drops it pass would have only been completed for about a four yard gain so independence will be forced to punt for the second time tonight what they were trying to set up was the flea flicker as tofield was coming around and williams before he caught the ball thought about pitching it first and he just dropped the ball had he had he held on to it and not tried to pitch it before he caught it Tofield may have scored because he only had one man to beat. So Independence will be forced to punt with two and a half minutes left to go in the first half. They trail this game seven to nothing. Weatherford will be back to punt number 80. Deep to receive once again is number two, Demetrius Hookfin. All the punts so far for Independence have been angled out of bounds. This one will be hit deep in a booming hunt. Taken at the 21 by Hookfin. Nice block there. He's got a little seam and a late flag comes in. I think they're going to get Candle Kentwood for clipping. And that was number one, Joe Hill. Looked like he might have got his head in front, but the referee thought otherwise. Well, they did get Joe Hill for clipping. And uh, from our vantage point, that looked like a very good block. But I did see another clipping or another referee throw that was a clip. So justice has prevailed nevertheless. So Kentwood will be backed up to about their 15-yard line. And they will have the ball first down and 10 with a little bit over two minutes left to go in the first half. Kentwood coaching staff, I'm sure, will be content just to maybe try to get the rest two minutes over and go into halftime leading 7-0 as they don't have very good field position. But with the type of athletes that they have, they can also go the distance. As you put the ball in hook fin or Ard's hands and Carter has thrown the ball well in the first half, they can put, try to get some points here late, but I think really they'll just try to maybe run this clock off going to halftime as they played a well of the first half, especially on defense. And they really have, Darrell. Uh, if you're Coach David Career, you've got to be happy coming in here playing the number two team in AAA and 2.13 to go, you're leading 7 and up, and it's got to be a big confidence builder. So they had clipping against Kentwood and a personal foul against Independence, so the ball will be set out at about the 28-yard line. First down and 10 for the Kangaroos, 2.13 to go in the second quarter. They will come out in a four-receiver package, two to each side of the field with a lone setback. Antonio Harrell, and that is Carter under center. Independence in the man-to-man, -man, and it will try to be a keeper by the Carter, but he is tackled there by number 83, Chad Falcone, and a nice play there to keep him to a one-yard gain as this clock rolls down to two minutes here. Kentwood will have a second and nine, and the first time we've seen the four-receiver package for Kentwood tonight as they come out this time back to the uh, double wing with the single back. Two receivers, one to the top and one to the bottom of your screen as Carter takes his time. He's under center, takes a step. He's going to drop back to pass, looking left. We'll keep it. And that's number 66, Steve Mulkey in the backfield. There's a fumble. Independence has the ball at the Kentwood 26-yard line. So there's the big play we've been looking for from the Independence defense as Kentwood has stumbled a little bit late in this first half, turning the ball over at their own end of the field. And Mulkey just held him up and got some help from a bunch of other folks. And the ball, ball came loose and Independence in business as they get a big turnover down to the Kentwood 25. And we talked about turnovers early on could, could change the complexion of a ball game. Independence had nothing going on offense, but now with a minute and a half left, they have a chance to get on the board and maybe even this ball game before halftime. So a big break there forced by the Independence Tigers defense. Three receiver set, Tofield is a lone setback as you hear the crowd starting to get into it now. Seaver fakes to Tofield, he makes a block, tries to get to the outside, puts it up for grabs and off the hands of number 32, Rod Williams. Good athletic play by Seaver just to get rid of the ball as he was pressured once again by number 82, Tim Cooper. And the pressure has just been relentless by Kentwood on Seaver, Darrell, as he has just not had time tonight and they're just coming with all kind of folks and he's just not having enough time to throw the ball. And we've seen him in other games get to the corner like that and be able to make a big play, but Kentwood Speed has negated him getting all the way to the outside and forced him to put the ball up. He was lucky to get rid of that one. So a nice defensive play brings up second and 10 
Minute 19 left to go in the second quarter. Kentwood leads this football game 7-0. They desperately try to stop the Tigers' offense and keep them scoreless in the first half. Sieber takes a snap. He'll hand to Tofield. He's got a seam. Cuts up the middle. Goes to the outside. One man to beat. Stiff arm at the five. And he scores. And that's the LeBron and Tofield we talked about, folks. You knew it had to happen, and there it is with a minute 10 left to go in the first quarter. That's just an awesome run. He cut up the middle and ran over a guy and cut back outside. And like we talked about, you can't stop him. You can just hope to contain him. And the offensive line for Independence gave him the seam, and there was a couple of big blocks downfield. I couldn't catch the numbers on them, but a nice job by the Tigers' offense as they have cut the lead to 7-6 to six with a minute 10 left to go as Weatherford will line up for the most important extra point. Williams to hold. Calls for the snap. It's down. Weatherford, it's up, and it is. Yes, it is. It's good, folks, and we have a tie ball game. So the Independence Tigers' defense forces the turnover and gives the offensive life as they have come back to top this ball game, big turnaround for the Tigers as they had done nothing so far in the first half, and all of a sudden you're back dead even with the Kangaroos. And a much-needed much turnover and a much-needed score. It gets Independence tied up 7-7 seven to six, seven and gives them some confidence. But let me tell you, folks, Dave, Coach David Curry for Kentwood has been there before as they played some great ball games last year with Southern Lab and the few other teams so he's been in this situation he knows that his kids aren't going to get down he'll take them in at halftime and get them back up so we're in for a whale of a second half here in Tigertown as the score is tied seven to seven late in the second quarter Antron Sieber will line up to kick off number eight Travis Westby in the middle the ball is shanked to the right and there will be a flag as it goes out of bounds not a good kickoff by Sieber, but with a minute 10 left to go, a huge turnaround in momentum for the Independence Tigers as they forced the fumble on the quarterback Carter as he tried to keep it. That was Malky who stood him up. We didn't see who stripped it, but a big play by the defense for Independence, and they don't get as much publicity as the offense, but they've done a fine job here, only giving up the one big play to Kentwood, and we know Kentwood can score. Yeah, other than that big play, Darrell, Independence has really played great defensively. But in, Kentwood on offense has to try to get some going because Independence is showing they can move the ball. They just haven't scored. And we are on the Independence side of the field, folks, as you hear the fans starting to get into it now. Carter will turn and hand the reverse to number 12. Red perfectly, but he breaks a tackle up the middle. And we're going to also get a face mask tacked onto this. As they get the ball out to about the 48-yard line, number 12, Noah Cooper, was hit behind the line but broke the tackle and sped up the middle. And they will tackle on the face mask after the fact. And that will put the ball inside Tiger territory. So they switch the momentum. But Kentwood is coming right back to take it back away. With only a minute two left to go in the second quarter, the ball will be at the Independence 37-yard line. So after coming back to get back in this ball game, you have to stop Kentwood here, keep him out the end zone. Kentwood, on the other hand, wants to drive it back in and say, hey, you got lucky on a big play, you got a turnover, but we're still in control of this game. Double wing set with a single backfield. Carter drops back to pass, looking for the out pattern. And number 46 on defense, that's Lionel Joseph, made a break on the ball and a big play to make him overthrow the pass. And that was a great play by Lionel Joseph as he came up and broke it up. Uh, but Carter, Darrell, has had time tonight, but great coverage by the defensive backfield of the Tigers. So only 44 seconds left to go here in the second quarter in a tie ball game. We are tied at seven here in Tigertown. The Kentwood Kangaroos, second and 10 from the 37-yard line of the Independence as they try to get back on the board and take the lead here before halftime. Carter drops back, fakes a handoff, going to throw again. He's going deep to hook Finn. Covered well and almost intercepted. No, sir, the referee says it hit the ground as I believe you might be blocked by the pole there. But it bounced off the turf for an incomplete pass, bringing up third and ten for the Kangaroos. But once again, a nice throw and trying to get the ball in Hook Finn's hands. And what Independence is doing, and they're doing a good job, is they're double coveraging uh, Hook Finn and not allowing him to be one-on-one, -on -one, knowing that he is the go-to guy when they will throw the ball. So... Kentwood may be well advised to use him 
as a decoy and try to get somebody else one-on-one. -on -one. But once again, Mr. Carter makes a nice throw as the clock has ticked down to 37 seconds left. He has put the ball on the money, and he just kind of put it up for grabs a little bit and see if Hookfin could go up and get it. Did not come down with it this time, so third down and 10 from the 37. Carter under center. Drops back. He will look to pass once again. Got a man going deep. Hit by number 59 and then dropped by number four, Keith McLean. And there's a flag down. Could be in the area of holding. But number 59, that's Don Drake, the big nose guard, 315-pound pound nose guard. And this one's going to go against Independence, folks. So Kentwood stays alive with 27 seconds left to go in the second quarter. So a big break there as Independence makes the error and gets called for the penalty. We'll give the Kangaroos a first down at the 27-yard line on the face mask call. So penetration there by Big Don Drake. Must have slipped a hand across the face mask and got called for it. And that will give them a first down with only 20 seconds and clock ticking in the second quarter. Carter drops back once again to pass, looking for Hook Finn. He's on the out pattern and skips it in there for an incomplete pass as number three, Antron Sieber, was there on the coverage. So with 10 seconds left, time for maybe one, possibly two plays if they can get one off quickly. And that's what they, Kenwood will try to go to the end zone right here. And I think they have two timeouts left, Daryl. So they may try to get one about down to the 10, 20 yard line and then hope to try to get a field goal. That's exactly possible, but with only 10 seconds left, you have to make sure your kids are aware to call the timeout. So with four receivers set for Kentwood, Carter under center, lone set back, he will drop back, and he's going to the end zone, folks, as he lobs it up deep, and it's well covered there as it floats out of the end zone. So only three seconds left, so a big call by the Kentwood coaching staff. I'm not sure if their field goal kicker has this kind of range, as it would be a... About a 40-something yard field goal, so maybe they'll drop back and throw it up once again in the end zone, see if somebody like Hookfin can come down with it, use his athletic jumping ability to get up and bring one down amidst the Tiger defensive backs. If they have got six of them in the game now in their dime package. So last play of the first half of a 7-7 ball game, and what a big play this would be for Kentwood if they can get in the end zone. Two receivers to the top half. Hook Finn to the bottom half. He will be double covered. They're dropping back. And he's going to be sacked down. He slips down, being pressured by 89. David Copeland to end the first half. A great ball game here, 7-7. Seven to seven. And right now we're going to bring you our halftime show.
second half, a few stats here. Mr. Tofield carried the ball 17 times for 102 yards and a touchdown. Aside from the one big pass play by Kentwood and the one big run by Tofield, neither team really did a lot on offense as Kentwood had four first downs and Independence five. So more penalty yardage really than offensive yardage for both teams. But it is 7-7 and a good ball game. Sieber kicks it off. It will be picked up off the hop by Ard at the 20. He breaks outside and dragged down at the 28 on a nice tackle by number 11, Jeremy Cooper. So to start out the second half, both teams have to be pleased that they played pretty well in the first half, but have to be a little more optimistic about what they think they can do on offense because defenses control this game in the first half. And they certainly did, Darrell. The, the defense set the tone of this ball game, and thus far it's been a low-scoring game, 7-7 seven to seven as we open the third quarter. And it's been a, a tough battle. Both defenses dominate. Let's see if what offense is going to get on track. And we talked to local legend Joey Shalasi at halftime, and he made the comment that Kentwood defense is excellent. They might not get scored on in single A this year because they will not face another offense like this Independence Tiger offense on their schedule. And Kentwood comes out and runs the ball for about a five-yard game. They did not run the ball relatively well in the first half, but they did have some receivers open and complete a couple of passes for 36 yards and a touchdown. So second down and a short five. Once again, it is Carter under center, and number eight, Travis Wesby, is the tailback. Four receivers spreading out the ball. They hand to Wesby up the middle, and he is hit hard by number 57. That's big Antoine Smith, and he will drop him for about a one-yard gain. And two consecutive trap plays up the middle for Kentwood, and Wesby might have got a yard on a good second effort, so it'd be second down and two, and Kentwood... Uh, showing different backs. They had Harrell in the first half in there, and now they come back with Wesby. So Kentwood using a few folks. And as we waited down through the stands at halftime, I got to tell you, there are folks everywhere. Great turnout here on a Friday night at Independence as Kentwood and Independence are tied at seven early in the third quarter. Third down and one for the Kangaroos at their own 41-yard line. Carter will drop back, try to get to the outside. He'll cut it upfield, hit hard. And it's going to be close. I think he might have got it on his second effort there as he spun back and hit by number 66, Steve Mulkey. This one's going to be close, folks. It looks like he might have it. No, they're going to call an official's timeout for the measurement. At this time, we'd like to thank one of our sponsors, The Caboose. Fine dining in Independence, Louisiana. Some of the best steaks around. Beautiful atmosphere here in downtown Independence. They have the great piano bar upstairs and downstairs more steak than any one person can eat. It melts in your mouth. They will get the first down, and they will come back as Ard. And once again, it's Antoine Smith hitting behind, but he gets loose. Still stacked up and stopped, and he breaks free. He's going to go. Oh, my goodness. What a run by Ard. Alonzo Ard broke at least seven tackles and took the ball 59 or 60 yards for the touchdown as Kentwood is struck early in the third quarter as they did early in the ball game and jump out to a 13 to seven lead. Just tremendous effort by a young man, Darrell. He just not quit. He got hit two or three times and he kept moving his legs. He switched directions and, and basically you can't ask nothing more from your defense. They're in position to make the play, but they just did not wrap up and Ard didn't give up and Kentwood bolts to a 13 to seven lead with 9.58 to go in the third quarter. 53 Garrett for the extra point, and it is blocked by all Britain. <laughs> and as we see a miss the extra point, that could come back to haunt you late in the ball game on a miss extra point as they jump out to a 13 to seven lead. That was a fantastic run by Alonzo Artis. He was wrapped up four different times and broke away and got to the outside. And once he got to the outside, his speed took over and they scored to jump out 13 to seven with 10 minutes left to go in the third quarter. We'd like to thank one of our sponsors, Gill Motor Company. Highway 38 in Kentwood is proud to support the fine players and coaches of Kentwood and Independence High. Come in today and drive away in the Chevrolet or Chrysler Dodge vehicle of your choice. Gill Motors also has a huge selection of program cars and trucks at a price you can't refuse. You know that Kentwood or Independence High School fans are always greeted with a smile and a handshake at Gill Motor Company. Gill Motor Company, Highway 38 in Kentwood. Garrett kicks one deep into the end zone, taken by Tofield, two years yard deep, and that will be a 
touchback, and Independence will take over down 13-7 to at the 20-yard line. So Independence once again starts off the half, letting Kentwood have a big play, and they will have to come from behind once again, as this has been a nice ball game so far tonight. We'll see what Coach Baggs came up with on offense to start this second half to try to get the Independence Tigers moving the ball just a little bit better as they were fairly inconsistent in the first half on the running game. They will come out in a three wide receiver set with one tailback, and that is LeBrandon Tofield. Number three, Antron Cyber under the center, two receivers to the top of your screen. They will run a misdirection to Tofield. He's hit hard in the middle of the line, and he's stopped for about no gain there as Kentwood gang tackles. That's Eugene Thompson and Paul Bates, one of the few that made the tackle. And Kentwood continues to hang tough up the middle as uh, Independence testing that middle and having no success. But uh, I guess they figured they're gonna, they can possibly break one when you got a back like Tofield. They're just going to keep going with it, and hopefully they'll best one. So second down and nine and a half to go. Three receiver set once again. Tofield the lone setback. Sieber takes a snap, hands to Tofield. He'll go up the middle, gain a few yards out to about the 26-yard line. We'll pick up about four or five and bring up a third and a long four. And we have a player down on the field. And I believe it might be LeBrandon Tofield. And I'm sure the Independence fans and coaches are holding their breath there. And it looks like he might have some cramps there as this weather is warm and the bugs are flying tonight here in Tigertown. So Kitwood has jumped out 13 to 6 here early in the third quarter. And at this time, we'd like to thank another one of our sponsors. That is Kentwood Ford Mercury. Right now, they're having their big 97 clearance sale. And also, they are your truck head headquarters up there in Kentwood. They also have a lot of driver's education cars, 97 Ford Tauruses, $5,000 off the manufacturer's suggested retail price, very low miles, all with air loaded. There's 10 to choose from, so take a nice country ride up to Kentwood and check out Kentwood Ford Mercury. We'd also like to thank Ragusa Hardware and Independence. Go by and see the fine folks at Ragusa's Hardware and get all your hardware, electrical, plumbing, and building supplies there and tell them that you appreciate them helping getting this ball game on the air tonight. Also, People's Bank in Kentwood. They are the fastest growing bank in the parish. Stop by and see Charlotte Rodas for a home loan or any other loan. They're a member of the FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. As Tofield is once again down on the turf, we will take a timeout and be right back with you. Sigh of relief from Independence fans as Tofield walked off the field under his own power. Sieber will drop back to pass. Get it out to Albretton. Breaks one tackle. Busts out to about the 44-yard line. So right there, a situation to where you take your one star out of the game and somebody else has to step up. But there is a flag down. In the area of holding. And that's what the call is going to be, holding against Independence. So once again, when they complete a pass, the big penalty will negate that play. And Independence just continues to get big penalties as a holding penalty. Nullifies a great pickup for a first down. Just an out route, and Sieber hit it right on the target to Kenny Albritton, and he did a nice job of picking up the first down. But That'll be nullified by the holding penalty, so that'll back him up, bringing up third down and 15. And Darrell Independence has got eight penalties for 90 yards. And penalties will kill you in this ball game, and they have tonight for the Tigers. But Kentwood has played one fine ball game on defense, so Sieber on third and 15 drops back, fakes the handoff. He's got time for once. Will roll to his left. He's got a big seam. He's cutting to the outside and will run out of bounds at the 23-yard line short of the first down. So Independence will be forced to punt. And Kitwood should come out of this with great field position. The Kitwood Kangaroo defense is one of the best in the parish. And like we talked about earlier, they're, they're not going to see a better offense than this Independence one. So if they can play this well tonight, they're going to be dangerous the rest of the year. And we look for them maybe to head back to the Dome and come away this time with a victory. The Independence Tigers with Quentin Weatherford back to punt. Number two, Demetrius Hookfin will set up shop at about the 45-yard line. He's deep to receive. Snap made. Weatherford 
Almost blocked. There's going to be a flag for roughing. So he gets a booming kick down to the 26-yard line. But there's going to be a roughing penalty call, and Independence will get a big break and a big first down that they desperately need here as Tofield is still on the sideline trying to work out leg cramps. They need to get something going in the passing game, and they will get a big first down to help them start that. Well, that's a big break Independence needed and a roughing penalty, so that'll give them a first down. And it turnabout is fair play. I guess Independence has been getting all these penalties, and now they get a big penalty. And just shows what a game of inches it is as the Kentwood Kangaroo outstretched to block the kick and barely missed it. Had he got one finger on it, no penalty. But as it is, Independence will have a first down at their own 39-yard line. First and 10 for the Tigers. I've got to tell you how well this Kentwood Kangaroo defense has played tonight. They have swarmed the ball, and they have not missed tackles and have kept the Independence offense in check. Number five at tailback in now is Otto Bonds. He tries to get to the outside, but nowhere to go as number 82, Paul Bates, on the stop. Also number eight, Travis Websey. And without Tofield in the game, I believe Independence might have to go to the air here to try to pick up some yards. Well, they, they've got capable backs, and number five, Otto Bonds, is a capable back. But thus far, you're right, Daryl. Independence is going to have to throw, go to the air, because they really haven't had a lot of success of running the ball tonight. So second down and 15 as he has stopped for a five-yard loss on the sweep play. The Independence Tigers desperately in need of a first down. Keep an eye on the sideline. Tofield has the helmet back on and walking around. We'll see if he comes back in. And there's a flag, and looks like that's going to be the Independence coaching staff is livid. I'm not sure what the flag is. Delay of game, and that will back him up five yards and bring up a second and 20. As we see number two trot back in, well, Brandon Tofield has the kinks worked out and the cramps going, and we'll see if he can make a big play to get Independence back in this ball game as they trail 13 to seven with 7:20 to go in the third quarter. Tofield is the lone setback, one receiver to the bottom, one in the slot to the top, and one out wide, which is all Britain. They fake to Tofield, use him as a decoy. They're throwing the fly pattern. It's deep, and it's not going to be caught there as he was double covered. Good job by number two, Hook Finn, and number three, Mitchell Winters were all over. Number six, Devarius Bass, as he tried to run the fly pattern down the left side. Not a bad throw, just a little bit overthrown by Sieber. And it was a good idea to try to spread this defense of Kentwood as in Independence <clears throat> throwing deep, trying to hit a home run. So that brings up third down and 20 for the Tigers. So with Tofield back in the game, you wonder if he's merely a decoy at this point. I'm not sure if he's fully recovered from the cramp. As once again, they're in a passing situation. Third and 20. Sieber fakes a handoff to Tofield. He's trying to roll right. Short pass to the fullback and will be dropped for no gain as the pass was completed to Brandon Dawson. So a good job by the Kangaroo defense after giving up the roughing the pe kicker penalty as they shut down the Tiger offense and, act, and eventually back them up 12 yards. So they will once again come out with great field position after this punt. Weatherford will be back to punt for the Tigers. Number 80. Set back deep to receive is number two, Demetrius Hookfin. He is an explosive kangaroo back there. He could really run, and if he gets in the open field, look out, Tiger fans. Weatherford with a high, booming kick. It is deep, and we're going to see Hookfin just get away from it as it will be downed at the 17-yard line. So a beautiful kick. Looks to be about a 53-yard punt there for Quentin Weatherford. The young man has quite a leg for the Tigers. So Kentwood will come out first and 10 at the 17-yard line. They've scored on their only possession of the second half. And Independence has done a great job defensively. Just gave up two big plays. And other than that, it's been a pretty well-matched game, Darrell. Yes, it has, and they defense the one big play they gave up in the second half. Well, they just did not tackle well. Give credit to Kentwood for staying with it and not giving up. 
And they will hand the ball off around the left side. And once again, it is number 90, Antoine Courtney. And number 46, Lionel Joseph on the tackle as they stop it for about a one-yard loss. Bring up second and 11. The Tigers have been playing the run real well tonight. Doing a fine job against Kentwood. But Kentwood has lived with two big plays tonight, and they lead this ball game 13 to 7. Second and 11 from the 16-yard line. Carter under center. Number 30, Antonio Harrell in now at tailback with four receivers set. He will drop back to pass. They're running a little crossing pattern, trying to throw deep, and picked off at the 39-yard line by Lionel Joseph, and a flag down. Lionel Joseph has made two big plays in this second half. None will be bigger than that interception, but we'll have to see about the flag. And that was another big defensive play by Independence, living off the turnover, so that's going to give them good field position, and they're going to get an additional 15 yards on the unsportsmanlike conduct. So Independence is going to come away with a ball at the 25-yard line of Kentwood. So Independence will have great field position here. As we saw Tofield go out and he tried to go, but it looks like he's still having trouble with those cramps as he comes back to the sideline. So Independence will have to do this one without LeBrandon Tofield for the time being. Number five, Otto Bonds in at tailback. will have to step up and make some plays for him as they set up first down and 10 from their own 24-yard line. Antron Sieber is the quarterback. Number eight, Kenny Albrighton to the high side. They are in the I formation. Sieber will take the snap, hand off to Bonds. He runs up the middle, nice little hole. He's got the legs moving and driving down to about the 16-yard line. Kenwood comes out of the pack with the ball, but I believe they're going to call his forward motion stop, and they will pick up about five or six yards, so a nice run by number five, Bonds. And a good job by the offensive line, blocking nicely, and Bonds going in there and doing a good job of picking up about six or seven yards. So that's, that's a nice positive yardage, and Independence sticking with their game plan. Whether Tofield's in there or Bonds, they're not going to change their game plan. So second down and four yards to go from the 17-yard line. Number three is Antron Sieber. He takes a snap, hands off once again to Bonds off the right side, and cut down by number 49. Robert Carter will stop him for about a two-yard game. will bring up third and two. And right there, just a off-tackle play to Bonds. And he picked up two yards to bring up third down and three. And, Darrell, I would think this will be two-down territory for the Tigers. And with the Tigers trailing by only six, look for them to pound the ball, try to get a score here and kick the extra point to take the lead. As we see number 90, big Antoine Courtney in the backfield once again. Where big 90 goes, you will see Bonds follow, I believe, here, folks. Third down and two yards to go from the 17-yard line. Three, Sieber takes the snap. He will hand to Bonds, follows Courtney, but penetration by the defense, breaks one tackle. He's trying to fight his way down, close to the first down with a flag down. Don't think he quite got there, but he's going to be close. Let's see what the flag call is. Looks like it could be a face mask against the Kangaroos. As tempers are getting a little heated here tonight, folks, in this close, highly contested ball game at Independence as they trail 13-7. Four minutes left to go in the third quarter, and it is a face mask against the Kangaroos. So that will give the Independence Tigers a first down, and Marty, they're knocking at the door. And they certainly are, and they're doing it with Otto Bonds, who's had nice, tough running inside, and Independence has benefited from two key penalties on this drive. So that's going to bring it first and goal down to the seven-yard line. And not only will this do Independence good in this ball game, but later down the road, they know that they don't have to depend on LeBrandon Tofield totally. They have other players that can make plays for this Tigers team. So once again, the Tigers have a first and goal from the eight and a half yard line. They come with the big backfield of Antoine Courtney and 66 Steve Mulkey at the up backs and number five, Otto Bonds at the tailback. Power football for the Tigers here late in the third quarter with the clock ticking down below four minutes. They trail by six. The fans are getting rowdy on the sideline as Sieber calls for the snap. Hands to Bonds, follows him up in the hole, and he'll be cut down after about a two-yard gain down to about the six-yard line. So 
for right now, as we see Tofield try down the field, they're going to try to pound the ball down the goal line against Kentwood as they're trying to wear them down. And that's a good thing to do is uh, with that, that big, big offensive guys in there. You got Antoine Courtney, big 57, Antoine Smith. Just give it to your horse and, and pound it in there. And LeBrandon Tofield is shaking off the cramps for the time being. And when you're in that huddle and you see your big guy come back, it's got to give you a little lift. Sieber takes a snap. It will go to Tofield. And he is stuffed down at the six-yard line. And that is, once again, 33, Eugene Thompson. He is the man of the Kangaroos defense. We talked about him being one of the best linebackers in the state. And there he went man-to-man -to, -man to Tofield and stuffed him for a one-yard loss. And he has done a good job tonight. Eugene Thompson and Tofield, Daryl, has just been bothered by cramps, and it's affecting him. So, unfortunate for Independence, their, their great running back has been hurt by cramps. But Otto Bonds has done the job so far as we bring up third down and goal from the six-yard line. They will spread Kenny Albright into the top half of the field with the eye backfield with Bonds in the back. Look for Seaver to try to make a play here as he throws the ball on the fade route to Albritton. Adjust perfectly and touchdown! The Independence Tigers have tied this game 13 all late in the third quarter with 2.25 to play. And look like the old Philadelphia Eagles played to Chris Carter, throw the fade route, and the young man made a beautiful adjustment on the pass. That was a beautiful throw, a beautiful call, and a beautiful catch to tie this game up with 2.26 to go in the third quarter at 13 apiece as Quentin Weatherford will try to attempt the PAT and put Independence on top. And we talked about the missed extra point maybe coming back to haunt you, so if they can make it here, they will take a one-point lead, and it is blocked. So we are tied at 13 with 2.26 left to go in the third quarter. And this will line up to kick off as their quarterback and kicker, number three, Antron Sieber, is on the sideline also having some cramps, so number 80, Quentin Weatherford will do the kickoff duties. Not the normal kickoff guy, but we'll see what he can do here as he lines up, and it is squib down the middle. It will be picked up at the 26-yard line. That's number one, Joe Hill, as he cuts back up the middle and tackled and brought down hard by Brandon Dawson at about the 33-yard line. So a tie ball game, it, is, it has been a roller coaster ride tonight in this ball game. Right now, Independence with a little momentum after tying this game up 13 all. And it's been a, a big, big change of momentum going from Kentwood, going back to Independence, to Kentwood again, and then back to Independence. So it's who can maintain the momentum the longest. So it looks like we're going to come down to the end of the ball game to see who wins this one, Daryl. And what a game as we... Once again, are here for the Tangy Game of the Week. Marty Morgan, myself, and the infamous Butch Lee on camera. Carter hands off, stacked up at the line, but there is flags everywhere as this play will not happen. Looks like it's going to go maybe an illegal procedure against the Kangaroos, and that's what the call is. We'll back them up five yards, bringing up a first and 15 from the 29-yard line. Kentwood is yet to establish a consistent offense may have been able to run the ball but they've had a few players open but Carter has not been able to, to complete many passes in the second half take away the one big run and Kentwood has not really moved the ball well on offense in the second half and no they haven't it's been a great defensive effort by both teams so both offenses have stalled but if I had to give the edge I'd give it to Independence but the two big plays have benefited for Kentwood both defensive have played tremendously tonight as Carter drops to pass. He's got a man open up the middle. That's hard. And it's incomplete at the 33-yard line as the ball sails slightly behind him. But he had a step, Marty, and Carter had the arm, just not the accuracy. He certainly did. I think the receiver got twisted up. And Ard thought he was, Carter thought he was going to go outside, but Ard broke to the inside as he was wide open and he would have scored. But nevertheless, it fell incomplete. So that'll bring up second down and 15 for Kentwood. And as we see another Independence Tiger, number 46, limp off the field with cramps. That's Lionel Joseph. They're starting to get thin back there as a lot of players are experiencing problems with cramps. The Kangaroos, who have a lot of players going both ways, we haven't seen a lot of them fall off with cramps as they're doing a fine job. Carter drops back. Courtney putting pressure up the middle, has hold of him, and sacks him at the 21-yard line. Big Antoine Courtney just bowls over two offensive linemen to make the sack for the Tigers. And I can't say enough about the job Antoine Courtney has done tonight as he has been all over this field for Independence. 
and that'll drop him for a seven yard loss. And it will bring up a third and about, wow, 21 or 22 with a minute 44 left in the third quarter of a tie ball game as the number one ranked Kangaroos and the number two ranked Independence Tigers have battled to a draw so far here tonight. The Tigers will bring four on the rush. They will pitch the ball to Art as he tries to go to the outside. He breaks one tackle, but he's not going to get by number 90. That's Courtney once again, and also number 57, Antoine Smith. So a little better tackling this time as they will force Kentwood to punt from deep in their own end. All Britain will be back, and they should come up with great field position here, the Tigers. And we as a player down for Kentwood, we'll take this time to talk about some of our sponsors. Tonight's game is sponsored by People's Bank in Kentwood, the fastest growing bank in the parish. Stop by to see Charlotte Rodas for a home loan or any other loan. They are a member of the FDIC and equal housing lender. Also, Kentwood, Ford, and Mercury. They have a lot of 97 cars that they're clearing out of there. The 98 trucks are starting to roll in, so go by and see them up at Kentwood, Ford, Mercury. Also, Ragusa's Building Supply and Independence. They have all your needs for your plumbing, electrical, building, you name it, they got it. Go by and check them out in downtown Independence. Also, the caboose. Fine dining in downtown Independence. The steaks will melt in your mouth. Be sure to go by and see Lloyd Kenshin over there and get something to eat and tell them that thank them for putting the uh, game on the air. And once again, Gill Motor Company of Kentwood. They have a beautiful place up there, a lot of fine automobiles. They'll make you a great deal up there. Go by and see them up there at Gill Motor Company in, in Kentwood. And folks, be sure you tell these, these people when you see them, thank you for helping put high school football on the air. And the Kangaroos, number two, Demetrius Hookfin, will line up the punt from his own 10-yard line. Back deep is number eight, Kenny Albritton. Independence in return mode as Albritton will feel the ball at his 41. Try to cut right, comes back left, try to get to the corner, but too much speed by the Kangaroos. Number 12, Noah Cooper, and number 49, Robert Carter, as they stuff them at about midfield, but great field position for the Tiger offense. So Independence, Darrell all night long has, has maintained the betterment of the field position as they have lived in Kentwood territory but have not benefited. They're only coming away with two scores as we are deadlocked with 54 seconds to go in the third period at 13. And what a great ball game it has been tonight. But so far in the second half, the Tigers are winning the battle of field position. Sooner or later, that's got to come back to help you. So first down from the 49-yard line of Kentwood. Sieber will drop back to pass, throws the out pattern to All Britain, and he drops it as he tried to turn and run upfield for he hauled it in. And Marty, he, it was open and a nice pass by Sieber, so they're going to have to do a lot of that without Tofield. And Independence doing a nice job offensively as Sieber has kind of settled into this ball game and uh, throwing the ball much better in the second half. And as I keep watching on the sideline, I see numerous Independence players stretching hard on the sideline, trying to get rid of cramps. LeBrandon Tofield desperately trying to work out the cramps to get back in this game as he wants to try to help his team win. But you need that kid for the rest of the year, and, and you got other players that can make plays for you. Second and ten, Seaver under center will drop back, hand to Bonds. He's hit hard in the backfield by number eight, Travis Wesby. And, Kentwood right now is bringing everybody up and saying, you're going to have to throw the ball to beat us. You're not going to run the ball anymore without Tofield. <clears throat> and Independence was having a hard enough time running the ball with Tofield and now having an even harder time with him out of there. So they're going to have to pick up the passing game and try to get it going from there as it'll bring third down and 12 for Independence. As the clock ticks down with only 18 seconds low in the third quarter, we are in for one well of a finish here tonight in Tigertown as this game is deadlocked at 13. Tigers third and 12 from their own 48. Sieber drops back, fakes the handoff, being blitzed. Hit as he let it go. All Britain's out there, double covered, and it is picked off by number two, Demetrius Hookfin, and a great athletic play by the young man as he just went up and took it away from All Britain. And Demetrius Hookfin, a state champion in the long jump, Daryl, a very good athlete, and you saw right there how the young man leaped about a 38-inch vertical and brought it down, giving Kentwood the turnover. Not a bad for Independence, just like a punt. Exactly as I was about to bring up, it was just as good as a punt as you throw it deep. So that is the end of the third quarter in a 13-13 ball game. Here is Kentwood and Independence are tied as we see the four fingers raised as we will come back for the fourth quarter. 
And Kentwood starts out the fourth quarter. They have a new quarterback. That's number five, Shedrick McKnight, a sophomore. He'll hand the ball hard up the middle and stuffed in the hole by number 63, Nathan Hatfield. A great one-on-one -on -one tackle. So Kentwood trying to change it up a little bit has made a change at quarterback. And I don't know what happened to Carter because he had done a great job, but I think he is over there down with cramps. So Kentwood... They lose their big go-to guy and as well as independent. So Kenwood having to do it with the second team or Shedrick McKnight, a 5'7", 160-pound sophomore. So McKnight will be under center in the double wing set as there is a timeout call by the Kentwood Kangaroos. As they have a second and nine deep in the independence, deep on their own half of the field. It will be second down and nine for the Kangaroos as each team desperately looks for someone to step up and make a big play that can win this ball game for them. As we're tied 13 all with 11.21 to go in the fourth quarter. Shedrick McKnight in the double wing set, single setback. Two receivers, he will drop back looking to throw. He's throwing it up deep for Hook Finn and he is well covered by All Britain. And a nice play as number six, Devarius Best came over to give help. Great coverage there by All Britain as he was stride for stride with the long jump champion. And that's a nice play right there by Shedrick McKnight and good coverage right there from Independence. Might have got away with a little bump. So third down and nine, big play for the Kangaroo offense as they don't make it here. We'll have to punt deep in their own end zone, and, can, and Independence will come up with great field position. So each team desperately needing to make a play here. The Tigers trying to come up and stop the Kangaroo offense early in the fourth quarter and get the field position they need to try to take the lead. And Carter has come back in at quarterback as it is third down and 10 from the 17. He drops back, rolls left, trying to throw. He's hit as he throws. And that was number 89, David Copeland. So nice penetration there by the Tiger defense, and they will get the punt, and it looks like Albritton will set up about at his own 40-yard line. So they will get, barring a penalty or a fumble, they'll get great field position here. And if they can get any kind of return, they're going to be in scoring position right off the bat. Independence has been close twice to blocking a punt here tonight. Let's see if... Kentwood can get the punt away and get a good coverage to try to keep them out of the scoring range. Mr. Everything, Demetrius Hookfin back to punt. We'll get it away. Punts away from the return man, All Britain. And it takes a nice roll. And he will just leave it alone there. Not a bad idea by the young man, but Independence will come up with the ball first down and 10 at their own 46 yard line. So far in the second half, a few big plays, but mostly a game of field position. Right now, Independence is winning that battle, but yet to be able to put the Kangaroos away. And the Kangaroos, although they've made two big plays, have yet to knock the Tigers out of it. So a great ball game here on a beautiful Friday night in Independence. Not a seat to be had in the whole house. This will be probably the largest crowd we'll see in a regular season game, except maybe Independence and a meet. There's people lined up outside the fences trying to get a peek at this one, folks. Three receivers set, all Britain to the loan at the bottom of your screen, two receivers to the top. And he slips down and they throw it to him and he'll break one tackle, cuts it upfield, will gain about four or five yards there, so a nice completion by Sieber, and they've thrown that little route two or three times, and he's been on the money every time. They're going to have to keep going to that. And Kenny Albritton, great athlete. He's done a, a fantastic job tonight. If, if you get him one-on-one, -on -one, Darrell, he, he has a possibility to go all the way at any time, and right there, making one move, but he had some help by that speed of the Kenwood defense. Otto Bonds is the tailback. All Britain will come to the short side of the field with Williams to the high side. Number nine, that is Danny Wells, is in the slot. Sieber under center. He takes a snap, rolls right. He's got great blocking, plenty of time. Man open, that's Williams. And he completes the pass up to about the 45-yard line for a gain of about 15. Beautiful throw by Sieber. He's starting to find the open man. Well, you give the young man time, and he's going to do the job. And he's had time in the second half, and he's been right on target. We we talked about Antron Sieber and LeBrandon Tofield being the guys on offense, and uh, 
Sieber stepping up in the second half. And in the first half, Sieber was under siege by this kangaroo defense. I don't know if they were just getting great penetration or blitzing a lot, but so far in the second half, he's had a little more time to throw the football and has made some good throws. Once again, Williams to the top half with Wells in the slot. All Britain to the low side. Lone set back his bonds. Sieber will look to throw, getting, getting pressured. He throws it up deep for All Britain. It's going to be a jump ball. Oh, my. And it's just out of the hands of All Britain as he made a great adjustment to get even a shot at catching that football. And that was a good job by All Britain getting close, although it was good coverage by 20. And uh, had he caught that, that would have been a better catch than the one Willie Mays made. And we have a young man that is number 20, Alonzo Ard, shaking up a little bit down in the end zone. Independence starting to open up the offense as they have a second and 10 at the 35-yard line, driving late in the fourth quarter with only 9.25 left to go in this game. It is tied at 13. The Kangaroos desperately need to stop Independence as they are on their half of the field trying to score here. As the Tigers come out once again, and that's going to be number 46, Lionel Joseph, to the bottom half. Williams to the top of the screen. Sieber is your quarterback. Number five, Otto Bonds, the replacement tailback, as Tofield has not been able to return to this game. Wells comes to the low side in the slot. Sieber drops back. Never saw him coming and dragged down. And I'm not real sure of the number. I've got to see it. That's number seven. Sarek Johnson, a Drops him for a big loss back to the 46-yard line of Independence. So a huge play by the Kangaroo defense. They've been a little bit in the second half, but they've yet to break, and they've kept this game tied as Independence will now have a third and 21. And Kenwood gambling an awful lot on defense, Daryl, and in this ball game it sure has paid off as they are coming with different blitzes and uh, just been a uh, good – whoever the defensive coordinator is for uh, Kenwood, I'm going to tip my hat because he's done a great job tonight. And luckily for the Tigers, Sieber turned just in time to see the man coming from the blind side, or it could have been a turnover. So third and 21 for the Tigers. Sieber under center. Look for him to throw it up top to Albritton, who is at the lower half of your screen. He's going to roll left. He's got Williams open on a frozen rope completed at the 32-yard line. They'll be about eight yards short of the, of the first down, but I guarantee you they will probably go for it from this point in the field. And once again, Sieber with a frozen rope puts it right in the chest. You just can't coach that, folks. He rolls to his left, throws across his body, 15 yards, like you say, on a frozen rope. And Williams did a nice job of catching the ball. So it'll bring up fourth down and seven with 8.06 to go in the ball game, tied at 13. He'll call fourth and eight from the 34-yard line for the Tigers as they're trying to get some points on the board. He'll drop back. He's going to be pressured. He gets to the outside looking for a receiver. Throws it up deep. One-on-one. All Britain up and broken up by number one, Joe Hill. And nice coverage as the ball hung a little bit and the players went up one-on-one -on -one and could not come down with it. So Kentwood will take over on downs at the 33-yard line. First and ten going the other way. And, folks, just two great teams going at it. It's been a war all night long. And everybody that's played tonight has done a great job. And uh, this is what high school football is all about. 7.58 to go, tied at 13, fourth week of the season. You can't ask for anything better than this. And not a soul has left this packed house as they're all on the edge of their seats with less than eight minutes to go in the ball game. Neither team offensively has been able to, to mount any kind of drives, but the Kangaroos take over once more with once again with Carter under center, two receivers to the top side and one to the bottom. He will try to run the option and he will keep it. Picks up about four or five yards and dragged down by big number 59, Dodd Drake. The nose guard getting way outside to bring down the QB after about a three yard gain. And you don't know how big of a play that was for Don Drake to keep hustling down the line because Carter had, had faked out one would be tackler and he may have picked up big yardage if not for the hustle of big Don Drake. And a great play by Drake, as we know he was injured last week and missed the ball game against Booker T. So he's not 100%, but still giving it the effort. Kentwood again in a double wing, single bat set. Man-to-man -man coverage on the receiver to the lower half of the screen. Carter turns, they're coming on the reverse to hook pin. He's got the corner. 
One man to beat to get to the outside, and he will be forced out of bounds at the 43-yard line by number seven, Charles Tofield. And they faked that play a couple of times, but this time they get it in the hands of of Demetrius Hookfin, and he made a big play to give him a first down and get the ball inside Independence Territory with seven minutes left to go in this ball game. And that was a great offensive play call by the Kentwood coaching staff. They've been setting it up, running the little counter to the right side, and they decided to come on a reverse and a big play in the ball game. 7.08 to go in the fourth quarter, tied at 13. Kentwood driving first and 10 from the 44-yard line. They will try to run to the outside, and that's number four, Keith McClain in the backfield. Also number 40, Ty Keith Smith, and they stuff him for about a two or three yard loss. Not fooled that time on the misdirection. So Independence on defense needs to step up and stop here, but even if Kenwood doesn't score, they reverse the trend of field position. And they have, Darrell. Like you say, this, this has uh, been a field position game, which Independence has benefited from but just not capitalized but one big break on the wrong end of the field can turn this ball game as independence got one early they throw the ball and it is one hop to the receiver it will be incomplete bringing up a third and 12. six and a half minutes to go in this ball game and looks like neither team can make the big play to get the score but neither team is making the mistakes that are costing the game either so Without Tofield in the ball game, Independence defense has to step up and make a big play. And what a great ball game here. A lot of pride on the line. These, these two towns are not that far apart. And I heard a lot of talking during the week from each side, and they both want this ball game badly. Carter under center as the Kangaroos come to the line. Third down and 12 from the 46. And we will get an illegal procedure against Kentwood as the wide receiver went before the ball was snapped. So that will push him back five yards, back to about the 49-yard line, where it will be third down and 17. And the Tiger fans are coming alive as the players are asking for a little boost here. They know this is an important series, and they need to stop Kentwood right here on this third and 16. And folks, uh the crowd is electric here tonight as uh, people are getting into it with 6.28 to go and this game tied and it's just going to come down to the end and it's been a whale of a ball game and I love this game. Football roller coaster, baby. Third down and 17. Carter under center drops back to pass. He's got a man in the seam. He throws the ball overthrown in and out of the hands. And that's going to be incomplete, forcing Kenwood to punt the ball as Independence will take over. There's about 6.21 to go in this ball game, so big step up by the Tiger defense. At this time, we'd like to remind you about one of our sponsors, Guild Motor Company. Highway 38 in Kentwood is proud to support the fine players and coaches of Kentwood and Independence High. Come in today and drive away in a Chevrolet, Chrysler, Dodge vehicle of your choice. Guild Motors also has a huge selection of program cars and trucks at a price you can't refuse. Remember, you always get a great deal from Guild. So Hook Finn back to punt, lines up at about his 39-yard line, and punt is blocked and out of bounds at the 50. That was number 57, Antoine Smith making the big play. And just when you think Kentwood turns the field position around, special teams play for the Tigers. Antoine Smith, huge block. Tigers take over at the 50. And Independence, is, it's been played close to the vest all night long, both teams. It's been evenly matched, but Independence has benefited from the turnovers, and they made the action on, on Antoine Smith coming in and blocking it to give them good field position at midfield. Independence trying desperately to find someone to step up and make a play for him. Sieber under center will drop back to pass, throwing the ball to Williams to the outside. It's open. He stiff arms. He's going to be pushed out of bounds at about the 42-yard line. That was number three. Mitchell Winters on a coverage, and Sieber found something on the left side with a little out route to Williams. Well, what's happening is the Kenwood defenders are playing about eight yards off, and they're just giving him the underneath patterns, and Independence is taking advantage of him, not wanting to get beat deep. So it will bring up a second and one at the 42-yard line. Tigers in business, and this crowd is getting behind the Tigers here as they have the home field advantage. But we've seen this Kentwood defense bend before. They stepped up, so we're in for a great ending as 6.04 left in the game, tied at 13. Sieber under center, single setback. 
He will quarterback sneak and pick up the first down. So first down and 10 for the Tigers at the 40-yard line. Independence knows that if they can drive down here and, and gain a few first downs and get some kind of points, there's not going to be a lot of time left on this clock, and they can take advantage of this ball game and get in control here as they're using the clock to their advantage right now as it ticks below six minutes. And one big advantage Independence has is in the kicking game as Quentin Weatherford can kick field goals from 40 yards out. So if it comes down to a field goal, it's going to be advantage Independence. These Kentwood Kangaroos are resilient though, Marty, and we're going to look for them to step up here as the Tigers have a first and 10 at the 40. Sieber drops back to pass, all Britain on the out route. Oh, the defender, number 10, Carter, had a step in front of the receiver, and luckily it was to the outside, or he could have been gone. Yep. Going after that out route once again, is that about the sixth time they have thrown it, and they may be setting up to pump it and then go deep, but had he been on target, that would have been six points for Kentwood. Luckily, it was thrown away from Kenny Albritton. And watching the sideline, Tofield has went from the bench up to the front where the coach is at. He wants to play badly. Independence really could use him if he's healthy, but he can only hurt him if he's not 100%. Second and 10 from the 40. Sieber has done a fine job in the second half of completing passes, mainly to Williams. He drops back once again. The blitz is coming, trying to get to the outside. A nice stiff arm and a rocket pass, and oh, it comes up a hair short intended for number, I believe that's number six, Devarius Best, brings up third down and 10 from the 40, and every time that they know Sieber has to throw the ball, Kentwood comes with the blitz, and they're getting a lot of heat on it. They sure are, Daryl, and uh, Sieber's just running for his life, and he's doing a nice job. He's an outstanding quarterback, as we have two outstanding quarterbacks in tonight's game but he just hadn't had time. So a big third down and 10 play for the Tigers. Kent Wood has stepped up the defense once again as there is 5.22 left to go in the third quarter. We are tied at 13 here in Independence. This ball game is all you could ask for, folks. Sieber will take the snap, fake the handoff. Looking for a receiver's got Oh, Britton wide open, and that's a touchdown, folks. He was all by himself, and the Tigers have bolted out to a 20, excuse me, 19 to 13 lead with only 5.15 left. And that was a great play. The young man set up in the pocket and waited and had time and threw a strike to Albritton, who was wide open on a post pattern. Roger Clemens may win the Cy Young this year, but that's the biggest strike for Independence football you'll see right there as Sieber drilled all Britain from 40 yards out, and they needed somebody to step up, and Mr. Antron Sieber did the job, folks. Big extra point here as Weatherford had the last one blocked. Snaps down, the kick is up, and it is... It's good, folks. The Tigers have taken a 20-13 to lead with 5.15 to go in the fourth quarter. They have the Kangaroos reeling slightly, but this team has been down before. They know how to come back. Don't run away from your set now, folks. We're in for a great finish. Electricity in the air on the independent sideline. There's not a person sitting tonight as the Tigers have opened up a 20-13 to lead. What a ball game we've had tonight. The Tigers will set up to kick off now, and they will have... Number eight back to receive, that is Travis Wesby in the center. And a big kickoff here. And we see the cheerleaders on the sideline. The fans are rocking, folks. I got to tell you, this is the atmosphere that you want for high school football. It doesn't get any better than this. No, it doesn't, Daryl. Is there, like you said, there's electricity in the air. There's about 4,000 people here. It's a raucous crowd, a great atmosphere. We couldn't ask for a better situation than we got tonight. What a ball game in week four as Weatherford kicks off. He's angling it to the right. That's going to be number 30. Antonio Harrell cuts back to the middle, has a seam to the outside, and trips and falls at about the 26-yard line. So with 5.09 left to go in the fourth quarter, the Kangaroos will have to put something together on offense if they're going to come back to win this ball game against the number two-ranked AAA Tigers. 
It's got to be hard for the Kangaroos to come here, even though they're number one ranked in the state in their classification, to come into the Tigers' den and try to win. But they have played one great ball game tonight. And they have to see if they have any bullets left in the gun here. It will be Carter under center. And somewhere along the line, you got to figure they're going to come back with the reverse to Hookman or try to throw it up for him. And right now, there's nobody on Hookman to the outside. He's going deep. They finally is thrown straight up in the air. It's a jump ball and out of bounds and a little mix up on the Tiger defense. And they might have dodged a bullet there as they were out of position. Yeah, they may have, but it was great pressure right there to save the day by Antoine Smith from his defensive end position. And every man that's played in this ball game, Daryl, you got to tip their hat to on both sides of the ball game, have done a, done a tremendous job. It's been one of the best high school games that I've seen in my lifetime. Great ball game here, and it's not over yet. As there's 5-0-1 to go in the fourth quarter. The Tigers have taken a 20-13 lead. Ind Independence on a 40-yard pass from Sieber to Albritton. The Kangaroos have second and 10 from their 27-yard line. Carter turns to throw. Oh, and he's hit hard. And that was the big nose tackle. Number 59, Don Drake. Huge hit, and Carter is not getting up, folks. That's 315 pounds dropping down on you. And we hope that Mr. Carter's all right, but that was a big bruising hit. It will be Shedrick back to pass. Throws it over the middle for Hook Finn. Tipped and incomplete on a third and 15 play. And Shedrick tonight will have to step up for the Kangaroos as they now have a fourth and 15 on their own 26-yard line. Excuse me, 22-yard line. We'll see what the call is going to be here. With only 4.37 left to go, looks like they will punt the ball. And if Independence can feel this punt cleanly and just get a couple of first down, this game could be over. There's only 4.37 left to go. So the Kangaroo defense will have to do the job, stop the Tigers, and get the ball back for the offense. Number eight back to receive. That's all, Britton. And he booms one back. All Britton will catch the ball. He fumbles it and smartly falls on the ball as the Tigers will get the ball at their own 36-yard line with 4.28 to go, leading 20-13. to 13. So the Tiger offense has a job at hand. They have to run the clock, get a few first downs, and try to put this game away, and they've done it without LeBrandon Tofield. And yes, they have, and now Kenny Albritton has been besieged by the old cramp, but Tofield is getting back in the ball game, and... Uh, they're going to try to melt away this clock and come away with a victory. And Independence needs the power running game, and Tofield's going to try to give it a go. you got to feel for a kid, biggest game of the year so far. He wants to play desperately, and he is a playmaker for him. So you got to admire his courage there. And the Kangaroos will have to step up here. They cannot allow a first down for the Tigers as Tofield in the eye set. Big Courtney to the bottom half of the screen. Look for the run to come this way, and it does off tackle. But Tofield is hit at the line and dropped for about a one-yard loss as there was no hole whatsoever. No, there wasn't. And the Kenwood defense continues to do the job as they continue to step up and, and not give Independence any running room, Darrell. And with Tofield in the game, look for Maven to fake one and throw the little out powder. They desperately need to get a first down as the clock ticks down to four minutes to go in the fourth quarter, second and 11. As we see Williams trot back in, he's been the guy on the out pattern that is, has done the job for him. So Independence Tigers second and 11 from their own 35-yard line. Time becomes a key element in this ball game. Once again, the eye backfield with Tofield, the deep back. Williams to the top half of the screen. Courtney at the bottom. They will pitch once again. And he breaks up the middle. There's Tofield. Stiff arm, he's at the 50, the 45, and what a huge run. And this kid is gutsy, folks. He's only a junior, and right now, everybody's applauding the effort from LeBrandon, the real deal, Tofield, because he is the real deal, guys. He certainly is, and I kept waiting for Independence to do that. They've been pounding the ball off tackle, and they go outside, and as much as they've gone inside, you figured something had to be open on the outside, and there it was for a 20-yard gain. But this kangaroo team will not, they will not give up. They're down seven with 3.30 left. But this defense has been strong all night. Look for them to maybe come up and try to make a big play. But a huge run by Tofield. And I can't tell you what it takes to go back out there after being out for almost a, a half with cramps 
as he comes out of A and makes a big play for his team. I backfield once again, Sieber under center. Courtney to the top, they'll run that way behind him. Tofield running hard, but stacked up at the line for no gain. And the Kangaroos come up with a big play there, but the clock is running, and right now it is the ally, as we believe Tofield is down once again with cramps. And second down and 11 from the 45 of Kentwood, with only 313 and counting left. The Tigers up seven, trying to pound the ball as they have once again. Tofield out of the game. That is going to be best in the backfield. Excuse me, Bonds. They hand the ball off to the fullback. That's number 24, Dawson, as he forces his way up for about a three-yard gain. And right now, Independence will bring up third down just to trying to keep the clock running. As Kentwood will call timeout, stopping the clock with 247. And the clock is still running. I could have swore I saw Kentwood call a timeout. It is now stopped at 243 as both teams come to the sideline. And we'd like to call, tell you right now a few words from our sponsor. We'd like to thank Gill Motor Company, Highway 38 in Kentwood, Louisiana. It's proud to support the fine players and coaches of Kentwood and Independence High Schools. Come in today and drive away in the Chevrolet or Chrysler Dodge vehicle of your choice. Gill Motors also has a huge selection of program cars and trucks at a price you can't refuse. You know that Kentwood or Independence High School fans are always greeted with a smile and a handshake at Gill Motor Company. Gill Motor Company, located on Highway 38 in Kentwood, and remembers you always get a great deal at Gill. Tonight's game is also being brought to you by People's Bank, the fastest growing bank in the parish. Stop by to see Charlotte Rodas for a home loan or any other loan. They're a member of the FDIC and equal housing lender. Tonight's game also being brought to you by Kentwood Motors. Ford, Lincoln, Mercury in Kentwood. They have a big 97 clearance sale going on right now, so stop on by and see Danny Sibley or Cheryl Laborde at Kentwood Motors. Also, tonight's game being brought to you by Ragusa Building Supply. Go by and see the fine folks at Ragusa Building Supply for all your home building supply needs. Little knickknacks around the house, they've got it all. And also, tonight's game being brought to you by the Caboose. The finest dining in Tanchebo Parish, the best steaks anywhere, great atmosphere. Lloyd Kenshin, one of the friendliest guys you'll ever meet. He makes sure every steak is prepared as, his, as if he was eating it. So great quality over there at the Caboose. And we'd like to thank all our sponsors as this would not be possible without them. With 2.43 left to go in the ball game, a big third down play for the Tigers. It is third and eight from the 42-yard line. Otto Bonds at tailback, Sieber under center, Williams to the low side, All Britain to the top. Snaps taken, they fake the handoff. He's gonna be pressured. Kentwood, he does not get away and throws the ball. I don't know if it's a fumble or an incomplete pass. We'll wait for the call. They're gonna call it a fumble, so he dodges a bullet, but Kentwood comes up huge as they sack him for about a 12-yard loss, and they will get the ball on fourth day, and his independence will be forced to punt the football. And folks, hold on to your chairs and your clickers. Don't go away, because we got 2.35 to go in this ball game, and independence leading 20 to 13, and it's going to come back to the final drive. And Demetrius Hookfin will be deep to receive. I look for maybe Quentin Weatherford to maybe angle this one out of bounds. You don't want to let Hookfin get the ball in the open field and make a big play on you. A little confusion on the Independence punt team. Whoa, and he barely gets away, and it is angled to the sideline. Takes one hop and will roll in the end zone as Kentwood will have the ball with 2.25 to go at the 20-yard line. And Kentwood had the rush on and barely missed the block punt. That could have been the play that turned it for him. Now they'll have to go 80 yards with 2.25 left to go in this game if they plan on winning this ball game. So the Tiger defense, which has played tremendously all night, once again has the pressure on their shoulders. Can they shut down this kangaroo offense? It has been a defensive battle tonight, folks, and both sides have played tremendously. The Tigers will be in their dime package, six defensive backs for the Tigers. Carter is the quarterback. You know he's got to be looking for number two hook fan as he's been their big play guy all night from the receiver position. Excuse me, Carter is not in there. They throw a little swing pass out. Breaks a tackle down the sideline. Gets the ball out to about the 38. And once again, that's the sophomore, Shedrick McKnight, 
with a nice little completion to number 30, Antonio Harrell, and a nice gain of 12 yards. Gets out of bounds to stop the clock with 2.16. And, Darrell, that's a lot of pressure to ask Shedrick McKnight to come on out here with the game on the line, the second-team quarterback. He did a nice job, showed a lot of composure, and Harrell made a nice run up to the 40-yard line. Not only that, Marty, but I, I was told before the ball game that McKnight got kind of beat up yesterday in the JV game. So for him to come back tonight and play and play as well as he have is you take your hat off to him. He's a fine young man. McKnight drops the pass once again, throws the out pattern. He dies, and the clock will keep running as number one. Joe Hill makes a diving catch but did not get out of bounds. So the clock is down to 2.05 and running. Brings up second down and two from the 46-yard line. We go down under two minutes. The Kangaroos have a lot of time left, but they're taking on a lot of time to get this playoff as there's down to a minute 49 as they come to the line second and two. 54 yards to go for the tying score. McKnight once again under center. They will pitch. They're going to run the verse to hook Finn. He's going to throw the ball. Got a man open on this side. And it is complete, but down at the 42-yard line. So Kentwood coach going in his bag of tricks comes up with a nice play, but the clock is running. And they have stopped it now to move the chains with a minute 31 left. Kentwood has got them moving, and they're down to the 42-yard line. And had Harrell not slipped, Darrell, he may have gone all the way because he had a couple steps on a, a defender. Had a lot of room to go there. As we see the Kangaroos lining up here, the dime package on defense, they have 42 yards to go. McKnight rolling right. He has contained the passes there for Hill, and it is one hop down. That will stop the clock with a minute to 13 left. The Tigers desperately trying to stop this Kangaroo offense, and everybody is quiet on the independent sideline. It's been real noisy over here, but everybody's on the edge of their seats, hoping that their Tigers can hold on. And it's been a well-played ball game thus far, and the young man McKnight, Darrell, has came in here and showed a little poise and moved the ball 40 yards into Independence Territory. And we're not sure how many timeouts they have left. We don't have access to that, but they have a minute 13 to go, and that is ample time for them to try to tie up this ball game or win it. Second and 10 from the 42. McKnight takes a step. He's rolling right. A lot of time to throw the ball. It's deep over the middle, but covered like a blanket by three defenders. They tried to go to hook Finn, but they had three defenders all over him. So good call by Coach Joe Levine, the DB coach, as he had him wrapped up at about the five-yard line. So McKnight tried to go for pay dirt there early. Now there's a minute six left in third and 10. And Independence isn't going to let Demetrius Hookfin beat him as he has been double covered all night long. So Kenwood may have to use him as a spy and get it to another guy with one-on-one -on -one coverage. But Hookfin has been your big play man. You need him to come up with a big play as Sieber did for the Tigers. So they're going to go to him. All Britain comes out on him man-to-man. -man. He has deep help. McKnight once again. There's a little confusion, hitting the backfield. He's away, throws the ball, and it is caught by Alonzo Ard down to about the 32. He's going to be about a yard to a half yard short as Kentwood calls timeout with 52 seconds left. And if they don't have the first down, this will be a huge fourth down play as Kentwood calls timeout. It looks to be about a yard short, Marty. Fourth and one, and this could be the game right here. And that was great coverage right there on the part of Independence, but it looks like Number 20, Alonzo R. just took, took away the ball from the would-be defender. So it brings up a huge fourth down and one with 52 seconds to go in this ball game, and nobody has left, Daryl. We'd like to thank Tangibo Television for giving this opportunity to bring you this game and also all of our sponsors for tonight's game. That would be Ragusa Building Supply, Kentwood Ford Mercury, Gill Motors, People's Bank, and the Caboose. Our hats go off to all those fine folks for supporting high school football. And we're just glad to be here, along with Marty Morgan and my cameraman, Butch Lee. I'm Darrell Smith, and you can't ask for a better ball game than we've had here tonight. We expected a great game here, and we've had every ounce of it that we expected when we got here, and nobody has left here. It's eight rows deep, standing room only in the end zone, as Kentwood has a fourth down and one, and this could be the ball game with 52 seconds left. McKnight will be under center, number 30, that is Antonio Harrell, will be the tailback. Double wing set with a lone setback. 
takes the ball, hands it to Harrell. He'll have the first down, breaks a tackle, driving down to the 21-yard line, so they will have a first down at the 21. Clock has stopped with 44 seconds to go as, in, as Kentwood hustles to get back to the line as they don't want to use the timeout. The Tigers defense trying to shuffle people in, and the clock starts running now, ticking down from 44. First down and 10 for the Kangaroos. McKnight under center. They move the ball. There's going to be a flag there, and that's going to be a legal procedure against the Kangaroos, and even though they give up five yards, it does stop the clock for them. So that's going to back them up, be second down and 15 on a legal procedure penalty with 36 seconds to go, and Independence leading 20 to 13. This has come down to the final minutes, Darrell. And it will be first and 15, as the play did not count. So plenty of time with 36 seconds left for the Kangaroos to get off a few plays, and you're going to see some passes go toward the end zone sooner or later. So this one comes down to the wire, folks. We're on the edge of our seats. We hope you are enjoying this ball game on a Friday night in Tiger Town. Tigers lead 20 to 13 with 29 seconds left. McKnight rolls back, being pressured by Smith. He throws it up for Hook Finn. The defender's there, off his head and incomplete, as three defenders were there. But Hook Finn had a shot. So it will bring up second and 15. The clock stops with 21 seconds to go. And McKnight, under huge pressure, did a nice job of avoiding the rush to get off the pass. And a nice effort by there by Hook Finn, but he was surrounded by three defenders. So that's going to bring up second down and 15. And McKnight put the ball right there where it had to be. Once again, they try to go to Demetrius Hook Finn, their big play guy. He is a junior, 5'11", 160 pounds, but he can get up in the air. 21 seconds to go. McKnight under center at the 25. He's going to roll right. He's got a man in the middle, and he looked like the receiver turned left, and he thought he was going right, so that will bring up third and 15, and Marty, they're running out of plays and time with only 15 seconds left. Yes, they do, and, you know, human nature is to try to get in the end zone right here, but with 15 seconds left, and one time out, Darrell, you might want to try to pick up the first down and have one or two more plays left to get to the end zone. Smaller chunks, and then, and then try to go for the end zone. Well, with 15 seconds left, you figure they got one good play to try to get the first down. Otherwise, they're going to have to go to the end zone. As everyone's chance on the sideline, they're on their seat. Edge of their seats here as the Tigers try to hold on to the 20-13 to 13 lead. McKnight drops back, getting a little pressure, throws it over the middle. It's open. Hit, breaks a tackle. They're dragging him. He's down at the five-yard line. Six seconds left, and Kenwood calls a timeout. Folks, this is going to be one fantastic play to end this ball game. Actually, Kenwood has no timeouts as they're up to the line. They're calling at the line. Six seconds left. They're waiting for the chains to move. The referee will start the clock. There it is, five, four, and they spike it to stop the clock with three seconds left. So we're going to get one play for all the marbles right here for the Kentwood Kangaroos. Independence leading 20 to 13, three seconds to go in the game, and this will be the final play. Either we'll go in overtime or Independence will win. And, folks, we could have not asked for a better game than this, coming down to the final play of the ball game. And this sophomore, McKnight, has directed this drive all the way down the field, and a great job by the Kentwood offensive line because there has been no pressure by the Tigers, so they will get one last shot at it to try to cut the lead to 20-19, to 19, and the extra point will be the key, whether they go for two or one, if they can get in the end zone here. Hook Finn to the high side of the field. Number 34, Brown to the low side. Number 8, that's Wesby, will be the tailback as we have a little delay here. What a huge play. The crowd is pushing forward toward the end zone, trying to keep them out of there. McKnight under center. Drops back. He hands the ball to Hard. He's got a lane. One man to beat, and he's tackled and down at the one. Ball game. The Tigers have won it. And what a great game. Stopped on the one-foot yard line, and it is pandemonium out here as Independent has pulled out a 20-13 game, and this is reminiscent of a big playoff game, a state championship-type atmosphere, and what a great victory for the Tigers. 
And we have to tip our hats off to the Kentwood Kangaroos as they played a whale of a ball game. As it came down to the last play of the game, and Kentwood literally came up inches short. They were dragged down at the one-foot line, and take your hats off to both teams as these guys played their hearts out. One team has to win, one has to lose, but tonight it's the Independence Tigers coming out on top 20 to 13 as they beat the number one ranked Kentwood Kangaroos. The Tigers now will step back, and two weeks from now, they'll have to step up again and play a meet, but for tonight, they are the victors as both teams line up to shake hands and you can't expect any better from these two teams. It was a great ball game. A lot of guts and courage by Tofil and the rest of the Tigers. The Kangaroos played fantastically. A great call coming on the reverse there, trying to get it in and drag down really inches short from the goal line. So once again, the Tigers win the ball game 20 to 13. This is Daryl Smith for Merely Marty Morgan and our cameraman, the infamous Butch Lee signing off and we'll see you next Thursday as we travel to Kentwood to see West Feliciana and the Kentwood Kangaroos. Congratulations, those ball clubs. Congratulations to Kentwood. They're going to go a long way. Dog safely and we'll see you next